So I was right all along, bitches. You know it. Stop fucking around. You know Harry Houdini was an asshole. All right? You heard it here first from Brilliant. Morris the Historian. All right? Brendan Companions from David Roth, by the way. There we go. You, got the, you, you even have the citation. Okay? That's how we do it on the Eduardo Toto podcast. We don't fuck around with, with just bullshit, you know? We give you the, the fucking source, the citation. All right? <laughs> Morris, Morris Chang. Hello. <laughs> how are, so? Okay, you're a magician, but you're not a magician. It's a it's a weird dynamic. I don't know how to introduce you because you make a point to say I'm not a magician, but you're a fucking magician. So explain yourself, mate. I actually have <laughs> um yeah. <sighs> okay, how how about let's start this way. So I'm not sure if um yeah, you just, can see that mm -hmm. right. This this tattoo, um. Well, the story is kind of personal to me, but I think the starting point is like sort of coming from um, Plato's um, mm. the theories of form, right? The mm. theories of forms is say the what constitute a chair, right? right. For example, and um, you can look at something, you can look at a chair and say, "Oh, this is a chair," and at what point that it's no longer a chair, right? So then, for me, magic. Well, it's difficult to describe with language, with the language that we have. Mm. Um, and I guess I have this sort of ultimate form of magicians that we are pursuing, mm. right? That's just up there. I don't know what it looks like. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's really difficult. It's almost like perfect, something ma magic's being quite perfect. Right, it's right. There. So, in your mind, the form of magic is being like perfection or something. More, yes. And until I reach to that perfections, and I won't be able to call myself a magician. <laughs> that's a that's a fucking <laughs> high bar you're putting on yourself, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, so I, I, until I'm a, I'm per, you know, until I'm perfect, I can't call myself a human. You know, I got. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. So you, you see how other magicians have like sleight of hand artists, mm. or you have some form of other than sort of given to themselves. And I think it's there's just untouchable quality with the words magicians. So mm. I guess, um, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> interesting, interesting. Okay, so so you're, a, you're, you're not a magician. You're on the way to becoming a magician <laughs> is what you're telling me. <laughs> you're on the journey. Well, I know it's um, probably in my lifetime, I will never be able to achieve that, but equally I'm quite happy with it, mm. yeah. It's, it's like an ultimate goal that you keep, you know, pursuing. And that's what makes human interesting, right? You have to have an objective and you just keep pursuing that objective. And, mm. you know, you're not going to achieve it, but, you know, that's something, you know. In a way, that's that's kind of uh, very, very, like, healthy and positive, I would say. Yeah. Because what you're saying is that you're just enjoying the journey. You're just enjoying the process. Pretty much. You don't, you're not outcome, you're not dependent on the outcome. You're not like, that's, that's not the, the reason why you do this isn't because of the outcome. It's just purely for the process. Mm. And what, if the outcome happens or not, which in my opinion, if you're literally <laughs> only going to call yourself a magician when you're perfect and it's never going to happen, uh, then, it, you know, that doesn't matter to you as long as you're pursuing the process, mm. which is, which is very like, like healthy in a way. Right? Yeah, equally, it can be quite, uh, I guess, in a sense, if you interpret it differently, then it can be, you know, quite, it's essentially an existential crisis, right? Yeah, because like the story of Sisyphus just keep pushing the rock, you mm. know, like, you know, ultimately you want to get over it. Right. But then at the same time, it's just, you know, it's just a, I guess, not a really healthy goal because mm. it's, you know, not there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Gary V, I don't know if you know who he is, but no. he he's a he's like a guy I follow for marketing, social media stuff. Basically, it was it was because of can you turn my headphones down just one notch? Um it was because um of his I think you turned the wrong ones, maybe? No, no, that's the right one. That's the right one. Uh it was because of his um advice or you know like stuff I followed from him mm. that I even started doing magic like tried to do magic on like a professional level. So like my start on my YouTube channel because of Gary V watching Gary V and he's like, mm. if you're good at something, if you even remotely enjoy it, go all in. 
Yeah. Like that was his thing. And I'm like, okay, sweet. Mm. And you know, like I didn't realize how bad I was at the time. So I was, I deluded myself into thinking that not only am I good at something, but I enjoy it. So I started doing magic. Yeah. I, I, when I didn't start doing magic, I started doing videos on magic. Right. And then I did that for like almost a year. Mm. Then got to the Wellington convention and people were like, oh, you should be like doing like gigs and stuff. Why aren't you doing gigs? And I'm like, oh crap, like I could do it. And then it all went from there. So um, anyway, the point is Gary Vee had the saying or thing about insecurity, ab about uh, perfectionism. Mm. And he says, perfectionism is insecurity with lipstick on, mm. right? So it's a way to dress it up as like, oh, I, I need to, like, I, 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 I'm not good enough until I reach perfection. Mm. On the other hand, perfectionism can really enhance someone's art because if you're never happy with your, like a lot of artists are fucking miserable. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because if you're never happy with what you create, you're always going to strive to be better. You're always going to strive to create better stuff mm. to be as close to perfect as possible. Yeah. But then if you use that perfectionism as perfectionism as an excuse, or if you like lean too fit too heavily into that perfectionism, mm. then it can be completely unhealthy because oh, yeah. 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 Equally it's um sort of one of those things where you probably probably don't want to be too harsh on yourself. Like for example, we can take something magic that we have just done, right? Um I think for me, there's two types of perfections in magic. Um, and one is you can develop, you can make your technique so perfect, right? But at equally as a performer, right, you're probably just not perfect. That means I feel like there is this competition, you know, that's been happening. I feel like if your technique is above there, but then if you perform, performing ability is below mm. then the, you create this imbalance mm. right and then that's pretty much how i felt with uh, my performance last time right? like technique can be really perfect do you mean this time that just happened or the, the previous the one that magic? The, the one that i just did yeah right that you felt like your performance wasn't in yeah. line with your technique exactly yeah because technique can be really really good right, right? but equally um, I'm just not happy with the performance overall. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which I so. guess, again, comes from practice and, and doing yeah. it over and over again and yeah. being um, being like completely invested in the process of mm -hmm. performing, yeah. right? Like if, again, yeah. like in a way, the reason why it's hard for you to look back and be like, oh, okay, like I didn't like it because this, this and that. Mm -hmm is because you're not like, oh, that's another step in the journey of me performing better. Mm. You're like, I didn't perform well enough. Mm. So it's more like you're shifting the focus from the process, you're mm. shifting it to the outcome. Yep. And that's when we can re re get like mm. tied up, you know? For me, um, and I was actually thinking about this recently, right? <clears throat> uh, you were talking in your performance and I don't know how much I can even say because you mentioned some whack shit that I, I'm gonna ask you about, but that's beside the point. Um, you were mentioning basically this whole struggle of like, in your performance, by the way, um, the whole struggle of like the, the magician versus the audience, mm. right? Now I had this thing and I still have it, but it's like diminishing as, as time goes on, this guilt, um, about lying, mm. right? So the fact that I would tell an audience something that was clearly not true mm. made me feel guilty and then I would sort of overly explain myself or, you know, have to have to uh, make up for, for it in some way. Mm. You know what I mean? So I would try to be extra friendly or something just because I felt guilty about lying to the audience. Mm. And I was thinking about that and I was wondering, like, what what is that? You know, like, because I know what I'm trying to do. I'm not being malicious, mm. but on some base root level, right, the fact that I'm like, just misleading someone on any level mm. didn't feel good, right? Mm. But what I realized, like I was thinking about it and what I realized that it's happening is anytime you care about, so if you if you, if you tell me a lie, mm. right? Like let's assume you're not a compulsive liar, you're not a psychopath, okay? Let's just <laughs> assume, all right? I, yeah. I don't know for sure, don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but let's assume, right? If you tell me a lie, 
that it would be really bad if I found out you were lying. Like, let's say you tell me like, oh, um, I didn't steal $300,000 from you, <laughs> right? But then turns out you did, right? That would be really bad. Now, if that's the case, then the outcome is like really important to you, right? You need me to believe that I'm, that mm. I'm, I didn't, you didn't steal the money, right? right? And so in that case, you will probably feel guilty mm. because, and this like pressure of like, fuck, I'm lying and I need to perform and I need to make sure that he doesn't catch me out. Mm. Right. That was, that's kind of the feeling I had in magic. Mm. But then if you lie about something inconsequential, you might have a moral dilemma. You might have like a, you know, like, oh yeah, I really shouldn't be doing this. But if you're like, oh yeah, you know, uh, yeah. When I first started doing coin magic, I used to use 50 cent pieces, but mm. really there were 20 cent pieces. Mm. But like, it, you know, it doesn't matter either way. Like, I'm not going to be upset at you for telling me it was a 50 cent piece versus a 20 cent piece. Right. That lie all of a sudden becomes so much easier to, yeah. to say and to lie and be effective. Mm. Right. So yeah. what I realize is that if I'm not connected with the outcome, if I'm not dependent on it going well, mm. I can lie very easily. Right. Yeah. Right. So then the, the thing is, okay, what's the outcome that I'm worried about? I'm worried about people figuring out how I do the trick. Well, what if I don't give a fuck if yep. they know how I do it? Like genuinely, like I don't care. Mm. Then it becomes really easy. Yeah. Because I'm just like trying to do my best. And if it fools them, it fools them. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Yep. And that's it. That's the end of the story. I'm not any less of a human because I didn't fool them. Or, I, you know, I'm not even necessarily less of a magician because I didn't fool them. Because I can mm. just do something else that I know will fool them. Yeah. Or whatever, right? So I realized that like basically... If I don't put any importance in fooling people mm. and I just do magic for the sake of doing magic, mm. it's it eliminates almost all of my guilt, all mm. of my issues, all of mm. all of the stuff that really like made performing really difficult for me. Yeah. And like in the last while, I've actually been sort of like that. Like I've I've said the story, but like I've had a friend, I was doing magic to him, he'd sit there for twenty minutes trying to figure it out. Mm. You know, we're both high. He'd like he'd like sit there trying to figure it out. Boom, 20 minutes later, he dis deconstructs it, tell tells me, I'm like, yep, that's it. That's You're right. You got it right. I yeah. do another trick. Try and figure this one out. Yeah. You know, And like a lot of them, he didn't figure them out. Mm. But it didn't matter to me. It was fun to do the, the, the engagement. It was fun to do mm. the trick. It was fun for him to try to figure it out. It was The whole process was fun. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I wonder if that's not what's going on here as well, right? Like mm. you're so worried about reaching this 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 outcome, mm. this perspective, this, not perspective, this um uh, perfectionism, right? That it, it maybe it's making the actual process of performing much harder. Yeah, yeah, mm. definitely. I think uh, Tony Chen, right? Mm. Um, most amazing magician, so who's also Taiwanese, by the way, but he was born in America. Um, he said, "There, well, because he 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 was used to be, you know, kind of like me, where um, he's always had a." kind of doubt or not not probably not doubt um it's probably more to do with there is this you know um magic a concept of magic that's just so high up there like higher art he wants to pursue but at the end of the day you know what if if something audience just want to see magic fun, fun magic yeah if they just want to experience um just the magic um, without all these extravagant kind of <laughs> reasoning yeah. struggle magicians has. Um, yeah, why not? Right. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's the beauty of um, magic, which I kind of have not experienced yet because there is this ultimate goal that's just high. It's, it's just up there, right? Mm -hmm. Like whenever I perform and it's just difficult to kind of, it's so abstract and I can't really take myself away from it mm. yeah i mean it reminds me of like comedians you know like there's a lot of comics that have really like and without trying to you know it's like it might be political but it might not be but like for example uh dave Chappelle, right whenever he makes a special and it's very controversial like mm. i understand that but whenever he like it's always some higher arcing social dilemma social mm. question you know, like, should we be able to joke about transsexuals? Should we not? You know, there's always, he always, like, weaves these narratives that, like, are very, like, you know, defining of the society at the time. Right. And then there's other other comedians that just do fart jokes. Mm, mm. And 
they could be as entertaining as uh useful in in that like you know like th their role in society could be just as important mm. you know what i'm saying like like you know it might not be apparent it might be like oh it feels empty to make a career right uh, on fart jokes yeah but if you if people are engaging and and you you're literally like you know touching people's lives mm. in whatever way yeah. right because you know if you're a, just a normal tradie yep building houses or whatever like how you know how much more of an impact are you having yeah like you know what i mean like how is a how is a normal job mm. how that much more useful to society mm. as a whole than some comedian doing whatever jokes he wants to do like Ultimately, there's no difference. If you remove one or remove the other, mm. there's no difference. Like mm. one person's not going to be missed, yeah. you know, in society. Yeah. So ultimately we can all just, all we can do is just try to, try to give what we can and try to give what we are and what we have and what we see in the world. And so for someone, like if someone sees, you know, art is what you see, right? Like it's mm. perspective. So if someone sees fart jokes in the world, then that's like, that's what, you know, that's what's really interesting to yeah. them. Yeah. Who are you to say that's not what you should be interested in? Exactly. You know? And uh, different jokes attract different audience, right? Like, for example, I personally enjoy a lot of jokes regarding um, Asian culture stereotype. Mm. And it's, um, but then in, in 21st century, like, especially after 20, maybe, well, current climax, and people would just call you racist, right? <laughs> Which is but, ironic as fuck, because if you're an Asian person exactly. that likes those type of comic, co comics, I mean, yeah. you know, what the yeah. fuck? <laughs> I guess if, if I can't joke about Romanians, then what the fuck can I joke about? You exactly. know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. So anyway, to backtrack to what we were saying, and I'll, I'll, I'll get back to your act as well. But we were talking about how I had before this whole thing, I had a, you, you're pretty much one of the only people that knows about it, really. Um, I had this other podcast about witchcraft. Well, it, okay, so let me just backtrack. Okay, <laughs> so as an ADHD person, right, it's really hard to do boring shit. Okay, whatever I find boring, and I can't control what I find boring, it's the issue, right? So I wanted to make a show, and I was like, what's a cool premise? And I was trying to, like, make, recreate, um, like kind of the the things that happened during the witch witchcraft um, eras, you know the the Salem witch trials, the uh, the the um, the King James witch hunts and all that kind of stuff, which to I'll talk about in a sec. Anyway, but that requires just reading boring as fucking history books that I'm not interested in, right? Mm. Like I needed the information, but I'm like I don't give a fuck about this shit, right? So I was like, okay, if I'm not gonna do it by myself, like clearly, right? Mm. But if I feel like I'm doing it for someone else, like even like I didn't ever want anyone to listen to it. Mm. But if I feel like I'm doing it for someone else, that will motivate me more than if I'm doing it for myself. Right. So I sort of try to trick my own head and be like, I'm going to put out this podcast of me doing research. Like I know that's the worst <laughs> in theory. That does not, that doesn't sound fun at all. Right. But it was kind of my, and I did learn a lot of stuff and nothing came of that show. And I just, I think I stopped on like episode three or some shit. That's where it stopped. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you had, I don't know if you if you even listened to it, but did you know, you know, King James version, the Bible, King James version? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I do know he, um, yeah, his version, but I don't read Bible. Yeah. So. Okay. So yeah. I, I was brought up like very Christian. Okay. I read the Bible three times, all in Romanian. So I wouldn't be able to like quote you or anything, but yeah. Um, so this, it's like a famous version of the Bible, King James, like everyone's not heard about it, right? Mm -hmm. King James Version is is named after King James the first, no, King James the fourth, I believe, of Scotland and King James the first of England. Mm -hmm. He became the ruler of both right. during his time. Um, well, obviously he didn't translate it. He just got some guy to do it and then took the, took the name. Right, like <laughs> it's how Steve Jobs was like, "Oh yeah, I invented the iPhone." <laughs> well, did you invent the iPhone, or did you pay some fucking poor scientist right. to just sit in the lab and just? Bill Burr had a great bit about this. Yeah, but anyway, so that motherfucker, King James, was one of the biggest instigators of killing witches. Like he, I think he was re directly responsible for like one of the biggest witch hunts in history. Right, I think over three thousand people, something two thousand five hundred people died during like a certain amount of time in, in, in Europe. Mm. And that, that was what then later on triggered the Salem witch trials. Uh. So basically King James wrote this book called demonology 
where he outlined all the different ways you can tell if someone's a witch. Right. And basically was like, yeah, they're evil, kill them, essentially. I mean, it was sort of like, I don't think, I don't know if he actually like specifically was like, yeah, go out and find them. But the whole, it was a manual on how to find witches, essentially. Right, yes. And um, yeah, so that was like one of the most read books before, like right, uh, right there with before the Bible. So not before the Bible. It was like, it was the second most read book or something <laughs> before the Bible um, during that period or some shit like that. But anyway, I don't remember the details. Point is, I read all, all about it. It was really interesting and I was like, that's cool. But it turns out there wasn't anything wacky happening. Mm. It was just like ideologies during the Salem witch trials. The motherfuckers were just like spazzing out. Like some some random like <laughs> 14 year old girl would just have like convulsions in the bed <laughs> and start screaming and stuff. There was nothing, there was nothing, there was no magic, there was nothing. It was just fucking some guys like screaming at each other going, you're a witch, no, you're a witch, no, you're yeah. a witch. No. And I'm like, I can't do magic with this. Mm. What the fuck am I going to do with this? <laughs> I thought there'd be some cool shit floating, yeah. s- flying something. Give mm. me some material. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So what I basically, my conclusion was, as far as I've done my research, uh, during the Salem witch trials, it was either a mass hysteria, mm. which uh, psycho- historians, psychologists and stuff, they say it's kind of like a group psychosis kind of thing which yeah. has happened throughout history apparently i don't know what would trigger that other theories are that it could be ergot in right. the grain which was uh, i think it's like a precursor to lsd mm. they could have been tripping like legitimately hallucinating uh there's a couple different versions but yeah th- no one really knows exactly what the fuck happened mm. like why that kicked off um that's probably why the discovery of witchcraft you know that english book being written yep. yeah yeah just to to debunk everything that people say it about um yeah it's just revealing all sort of witchcraft secrets to protect you know the victims mm. yeah yeah it's pretty fucked up and like there, there's like a, f- a famous case which i don't recall the details of but like a little girl basically was sort of like pressured by like priests and stuff to turn in her own family mm. and she was like nine years old and like ended up getting her like grandma her auntie or something out like just like a bunch of people killed her family yeah, yeah just because she was like basically like they were like, you know, they're witches, like do the right thing. And like, she was, a t- she was a little girl. Like what the hell is she going to do? You know, mm. it's crazy though. It's absolutely insane. What, what went down? And like that's a person who wrote the Bible. Um, well, who, he, who supposedly translated yes, that yeah. version and everyone reads that translation, you know, it's right. just like, what the fuck? Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's probably another, in, in the sense that it's like another, period of social justice right right <laughs> if you look at in the <laughs> i i wonder like i did read i can't remember where i read it but there was some some ideas about why um old older women were targeted mm. and it was something to do someone was making a case that like potentially it was to do with the fact that like you know uh, during the time like older women would because they would lose their sexual appeal and like the, you know they, w- they wouldn't be good for like having babies anymore obviously right so like they became in this really strange place of society where like they were old and, and like, you know, intelligent and like you know, intelligent, you know what I mean? Like they, they, they were wise, yeah. right. Wiser than everyone around them, but they had no power in, and like in the general structure of the society. Right. And, and so then they were really like focused on generating like influence over this, over the social structure. Yeah. If that makes sense. Like, you know, they would such kind of like be like, oh, did you hear gossip? And, you know, they would kind of control this, like the social space within the little communities. Right. And so some, they were making a point that maybe they were trying to target these like mm. kind of healers and older women that seem to have so much power in these smaller communities. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's true or not because there were many different, mm. like I'm pretty sure there were even some cases of males mm. being, being um, like found guilty or whatever. Right. Of like having moles or some yeah. dumb shit. I don't know. <laughs> it, yeah, I guess what I cu- what I'm curious is um, for me mm. that's very interesting topic. Right. And what's stopping you from continues that journey? Well, to be honest, I wanted to recreate some magic. Mm. Like I wanted mm-hmm. to take. Oh, this used to be. The people thought this was real, and right. I'm going to redo it. But there was nothing. <laughs> I couldn't find one single thing. They'll be like, "Oh yeah, throw the witch in water. If she floats, she like like tie stones to her. If she yeah. floats, she's a." she's uh, innocent if she thinks she's a witch i'm like well, what the fuck am i gonna do with that just kill some poor lady like jesus christ you know oh, so uh, yeah I, like i just the whole premise of what i was 
trying to make just didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> That's really what it was. Yeah. You know, I, th- I feel like, yeah, um, you, you told me about this, uh, I don't know how long ago, but I never get a chance to really listen to it. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't made to be listened to, right. like, to be honest, you know <laughs> what I mean? I was just like, I'm doing research and I need to have an accountability factor. Otherwise yeah. I won't do it because yeah. I'm lazy as fuck. I'm quite keen to listen to it. Oh, if you no. still have a call I don't know where it. the, like, I actually don't even know where I would find it. So I hope no one can find right. it. I really yeah. hope so. Yeah, I, I will hunt it down, so. <laughs> <laughs> like a witch hunt. <laughs> <laughs> oh god yeah oh anyway so um the other thing i was gonna say and that concludes all our pre-topics uh king the new king mm. you know he was a magician apparently wait new king king as in charles king charles he's like a member of the uk magic circle for like many years really? there's photos of him doing the cups and balls cups and balls. yeah <laughs> like oh, i literally wow. just posted one to my story Oh, okay. Yeah. I missed that. So we're taking over the world, baby. Oh, yeah. You better you better get perfect soon so you can call yourself <laughs> magician because we're taking over. <laughs> wow. So yeah. so a photo of him perform, performing cups and ball. Yeah, yeah. Um, and auditions for some sort of um, magic circle? Or? I don't know if he auditioned or not, but he's definitely a member. I mean, that's according to that post wow. that I saw. Yeah. And when was he in the photo? Like when, when did the photo taken? Was it relatively young? When oh, he was or? quite young. Let's, let's see if I can find it for you. It's on my, it's on my Instagram. Uh, here you go. It'd be interesting to, um, it is. Oh, hold up. It'll, yeah. You'll just click on my story again. If it, uh, in case you didn't know, the new king of England is a magician and longtime member of Magic Circle in England. <laughs> oh my gosh, you are either with us or against us. Yeah, I mean that was my little my little take on it. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's fascinating. Yeah, there's a lot of like un- unlikely celebrities that were super into magic. Yeah, yeah. I recently, well, not recently, but um, one of the first auto um biography that I finish is by um ooh, I can't believe that name escape escape from me. Um Steve uh he's a comedian. Okay. Harvey? No. No. Um oh my gosh, I um complete I forgot. I uh, I'll get back to you on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he is really famous. He can actually do table feral. Um, oh fuck. And he used to work in the magic store for four years. Mm. Um and so for people listening, right? Table Pharaohs. <laughs> so this is this is called the Pharaoh Shuffle right here, where you interlace every single card in a, in a pack of cards. Um, it wasn't even perfect then, but basically the idea is that you interlace them one 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 like completely, properly, right? So it's completely interlaced the whole way through. And <clears throat> this would not be considered a perfect Pharaoh because there's three cards without an interlace. There's a couple somewhere here that that don't interlace. But there's an even harder version of that where you do it at the table. And the benefit of that, it looks completely like a shuffle. So this is like a kind of a casino shuffle. And the way you would do the table, sh- table uh, pharaoh, some, some way like this, I can't do it. But it's considered very hard. Um, so for someone even remotely famous to be able to do a table pharaoh is significant. So, yes, it's um, Steve Martin. Steve Martin. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I think I, can, do you have the photo? Yep. He's a American actors. Ah, oh. yeah. Um, okay. What kind of? Sh- but yeah, the book was um quite fascinating because uh he. Well, he kind of sort of gave up magic. Um, he was when he was whenever he did kind of uh, open mic, he mm. always um with the uh, characters of magicians. Um, and eventually he sort of abandoned magic and just um, stick with comedy. Yeah. And yeah, it's quite a fascinating read, but mm. it was a while back. Um, yeah, I, can't, I couldn't even right, remember right. the name. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's that guy, Neil Patrick Harris. Yes, yes. He's like, isn't he the, the, the fucking... Yeah, he is... Um, I was going to say principal. <laughs> Oh, see, not no, not, uh, not even CEO. He's like president, president of some of Hollywood IBM ring or some shit, something no? like that. Yeah, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, I then think Muhammad Ali, 
was yep. also a magician. Yeah, there's a lot of the people. Yeah. So I think they um many of them wouldn't call themselves, you know, obviously magicians, but then uh, one way or another they all have, you know, experience mm. in magic um as probably performing magic as a kid and sort of, you know, the good one become becoming an actor. They probably found magic to, you know, not much not much money generators. And right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's weird, eh? Cuz like I don't know, like <clears throat> even the something magic when I would bring like I would bring in a, an act um you know, it's uncomfortable getting critiqued, right? Mm. It's uncomfortable cuz you're like, "Oh, I thought this was a good piece of magic. I I I had good feelings about this. Oh, this is going to be great." Mm. And then people come in like, "Oh, it's, it's not this part doesn't work. This is this needs to change. This needs critiqued to critiqued by magicians." Right, or? right. Yeah. And um and so I realized that like I was sort of placing, again, it's an outcome thing, placing an expectation of myself to myself of being a certain level of magician. And that would entail that like a certain level, level of magician doesn't have bad ideas, doesn't, you know what I mean? Like there's a certain expectation that I would set to myself. Like, you know, and so when you get, when I would get critiqued like this, mm. I'd be like, oh, I consider myself a magician of this level and therefore like this is bad because that means I'm not at that level or something. Mm. Right. Mm. Um, so when I was, re I realized I was doing that. I just went completely the opposite way. Like just mentally, I was like, Oh, okay. Like in, in the same way I would do for martial arts or something like I'm a white belt now. Like I don't like, I don't have any expectations of myself. Mm. I can call myself a magician. I can, I am a professional, mm. but it's okay. If it's trash, like if it's okay, if I'm, if I'm the worst guy in the room, mm. I'm okay with that, you know? And so like, I almost don't attach this like very, any, any sort of expectation to that title of magician. Mm. It's just like, oh, I like to do this thing that society has labeled magician. Right. But there's terrible magicians and there's great magicians and great magicians have terrible ideas and terrible magicians have great ideas sometimes. Mm. Like there's no... It's like, it's not like a, a binary thing of like, you're either this or you're that, or, you know, you're either bad or you're good. Like, you know, like you could have a guy that's trash at performing and comes up with some crazy idea, goes and fools Penn and Teller. It's possible. Mm. It's possible. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, I, I, I've like realized that I was kind of placing myself in a, in a self-critiquing position mm. where I didn't need to be. Right. Like now, like for the last couple of something magics, I genuinely don't have any negative reaction to a to a critique mm. because I I don't think I'm like I I feel like because I've like I'm convincing myself every time I have this thought it's like I'm the worst guy in the room mm. so it doesn't matter like you know what I mean like I'm learning from all these guys because there is for sure several aspects of magic mm. that any of these guys in the room is better than than me mm. right and I might have some things I'm better but it doesn't matter because ultimately, you know what I mean? Like if I'm in, a, in, the, in that space of like learning, yeah. if I'm just in a space of like, let me try to get the most out of the people that are here. Mm -hmm. Then I'm never going to feel like, oh, like, you know what I mean? Like it's never going to feel bad. Mm. And so it's kind of a recent thing, but that's the same thing with like, with, with grappling mag uh, uh, martial arts and stuff like that. Yeah. Is that, you know, if you go to training with the expectation that I have to win, mm you rock up the training and there's a fucking, you know, there's a guy that's like tough as fuck in the room. You're not going to want to, you're going to try to duck him, right? You're, yeah. you're going to avoid that guy because you don't want your ego checked. Mm. But if you go in like, oh, I'm, I'm just here to learn. I need to go with the best guys. Mm. You know, you're probably going to get your ass kicked by that guy. Yeah. But that's how you're going to get better. Yeah. Every performance is a learning experience, mm. right? Like mm. as long as you see yourself as students of yeah. magic, then yeah, there's so that, that's what I mean, right? So to me, the title of magician mm. is more that, yeah, a student of magic. So yes. to me, Muhammad Ali with a bad back palm, <laughs> you know, hey, that's more than most people can do. Yep, you know what I mean. So to me, that's still like a magician. Like mm. you might not be a professional, you might be amateur, you might be mm. like there's certain like categorizations we can we can name, but it doesn't matter. Like yeah. you know, if you, to me, if you if you give someone like like. I just had a friend, he came for one class of, of jujitsu, right? Mm. And I was like, congratulations, you're officially a white belt. He's like, I don't even have a gi, like a, you know, a kimono. Mm. It's like, I don't even, yeah, it doesn't matter. You came to one class that, that theoretically means you're now like That's a one of the people, like you're yeah. technically a jujitsu player. Mm. 
how good you want to get, that's up to you, mm. you know? So the same thing for me, like if I teach someone a, um, what's that move called? Uh, where you, it's in uh Royal Road, Royal Road to card magic. I peak this card. What's that? The, the, the card across principle or whatever the hell it's called. Peak. No. So you know how, um, okay. This trick here. Yeah. Okay. So, so just say stop as I go through. Stop. Yeah. You want me to keep going or is that good? Uh, I, I'm unhappy with that. Okay. So uh, t- take that. Yeah. Look at it. Put it back. And then you can cut as many times as you want. And mm. I know that your card is. Yeah. Yeah. Right here. Sort of like a key card. Key and card. That's yeah. what I'm looking for. Key card principle. If I teach someone the key card principle and then I'm like, okay, develop something with it and they do a trick in the next five minutes. To yeah. me, they're a magician. Yeah. Whether or not they want to take it any further, whether, you know what I mean? Like mm. on, on some level, they, they learned some magic and mm. they tried performing and they had some thought into how can I present this in the way that's the most powerful. Like that, that to me is like, you're on the right, you're on the road, you're on the, you're on the path. Right. If you want to keep it going, that's cool. If you don't, that's cool. Yeah. You know, but to me, like you've achieved the thing that's that, mm. you know, mm. like that's it yeah. in my eyes. So I guess there's a, I guess in that sense, that comes to a different type of understanding or different type of definition of mm. what comes to do a magicians, right? It's almost like, you know, how, when do you call someone out oh, is, well, we probably won't delve into this, but is magic an art, right? Mm. That's a really broad topic. And I sort of have my answer for it. But then the first thing to recognize is that, you know, not all the paintings are coming from, you can't really call a doodling on the wall um, an art. Unless it's from like 20,000 years ago. 20,000 years ago. Right. As in cave paintings, like we go, that's, that's really crazy. Look at this yak. Yeah. And it's just a fucking stick figure. Yeah. Painted in shit. Or like blood or something. And yeah, but equally, there has to be some form of, you know, meanings. Um, it have to be some form of meaning that people put into yeah, that's true. That cave painting in order to make it, you know, like what you call art, mm. right? It's, I feel like cave, pen, um, cave painting is, it's a little bit, you know, vague kind of, is it really an art or is, do you, you know, do people force the meaning of art into that painting mm. therefore make it into an art? I guess maybe or, the, the, the circumstance of where it's found, how it is, what it tells us in the modern world about what came before us mm. could be all aspects that create the piece of art in that sense. But if you were to get some guy down the street to fucking draw a doodle on the wall, it's not it's not gonna have the same impact, is it? Yeah, you, you sort of I feel like that particular piece will have to resonate with someone and then in order for it to become art. <clears throat> right. But then but then what about like these fucking modern art bullshit, man? Like yeah. you can't put an empty box with like a stone in it and be like, oh yeah, you know what I mean? Like that, it's, at that point, it's just marketing. Have you seen the it's one It's just with, social media shit. You have know? you seen the one with a banana? No. So I have um, one of these kind of, I have multiple account with my Instagram and right. one of them is uh, what I call a meme account. So where I kind of just, you know, um, only follow the meme. Right, right. And then I have this one, this picture right here. Right. As my um, kind of, it's a, I would say it's a critique to the art. Right. Yeah. So this is literally someone taping a banana on the wall mm. inside the art gallery. And then that one's, for some reason, some rich guy auctioned it for $3 million, mm. 3 million US dollars. Yeah. So it's, you know, we're coming back to all these modern art mm-hmm. stuff. Um, and art is object, uh, well, it's subjective. A subjective, yeah. right? So, um, when do you wh- when how do you really call something an art, and when do you really call something an art? That's right? the thing, because it's if if it's just if if art is just um, that it means something to someone, or that or that like it, it riles up an emotion, or it riles up a, a response, or something, right? 
then like marketing is the greatest art mm. that's ever been invented yeah. since the beginning of time. I mean, like, you know what I mean? Like that is literally the metric. We can measure it. Mm. We can say, oh, this piece of art, mm. this ad brought this company three, $30 million in revenue. Mm. That That's a metric. You can literally measure it. it. It was very effective at what it's supposed to do. Yeah. You know? And a lot of these like modern art stuff, it's it's just like, it's just a piece of shit. And then <laughs> you create the marketing around it that it riles up first of all, controversy, and second of all, a bunch of like loyal fans mm. that create this demand where there wasn't anything there. You know what I mean? So I'm not super convinced that art is just someone deriving meaning from something. Like, mm. I mean, you know, art is whatever you want it to be. So if, if that's what you want, you're rich as fuck, you want to pay for, you know, I can, I can, I can give you a banana, man. Like, you know, we're chill, you know, like I need the money. So if you, I got plenty of bananas if you want them, <laughs> but like, you know what I mean? But like in my eyes, art on some level has to be exp a self, a mode of self-expression one, mm. right? which I guess you could argue banana on a wall is in some way a self-expression. Okay, sure, if you're in a mental hospital. Right. But <laughs> but um, there has to also be some some like skill involved, some some ability that you're demonstrating mm. that's impressive in, an, in, a, in of itself. Right. Right? So like the reason, like even martial arts, to me, they all can be considered arts because mm. If you watch like a competitive judo match, like of Olympics, okay, they are all they are literally both trying to express themselves through movement, mm. and also like negate each other's movement. So in a way, it's a physical argument. Right. That's really what it is, right? So to me, you know that that could be considered art for sure. Mm. Um, you know, like painting, for example. Maybe it's not like no one's literally blocking you and telling you, oh, you can't use this color, mm. you know, like it's not like a fight, yeah. but you, you, you know, there's still a lot of health expression. There's a lot of skill involved. There's, there's, you know, techniques you have to learn and master and mm. you know what I mean? Um, but, and I mean, you could argue that if you make some shit piece of art, but then you market it well, that's the skill, that's mm. the skill in involvement. And I guess that's true. I mean, I, I don't know, but to me, like, I, you know, I'm going to see that as marketing. Right. I'm not going to see that as art. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's a, a different discipline to me. Because mm -hmm. right. it's a funny, the, um, I read this book called um, The Meaning in the Making by uh, Sean Tucker, who's an amazing photographer. Uh, and the first or second chapter, you talk about like what's the main core ingredients for the art, right? And he sum up in one uh, sentence that said, Bring the like art. a tiny bit closer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the art has to reveal a truth, mm. right? One way or another, like the truth, what truth, you know, like doesn't doesn't matter what truth it is. It has to tell some form of truth. And then secondly, um, and we can talk about the word origin of art, right? The art is equivalent, you say, to make. Mm. In the beginning, like how art, the word art came about is to make, to skill which resonate what you just described. Right. Yeah. And it's kind of interesting way to look at it. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that way, I'm almost, now you're convincing Yo. me that, that modern art is more of art than anything else. Because it's, it's telling a truth. It's telling the truth that people are fucking stupid, dude. <laughs> fucking idiots. If yeah. you're going to pay $3 million for a banana stuck to a wall, you're a fucking retard. I'm sorry, but... I mean, Jesus Christ, please introduce me to these type of people. Okay, if you know someone that wants to pay $3 million for a banana on a wall, please, may I be of acquaintance? Yeah. Let me shake your hand, sir. <laughs> 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 Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so like, I mean, go back to um, kind of the reason we sort of talking about this art thing. I feel like if you're telling a kindergarten's kids to draw this on a piece of paper, and um, I don't see that as a kind of artist, right? Mm. And it's kind of equal to what I kind of disagree with. If you teach someone a key card principle, right. and in five minutes he's able to do it and he start calling himself magicians, mm -hmm. 
well, I probably disagree on that. Mm. Like, because my ideal of, of a magician, like the word magicians shouldn't be used, you know, right. quite, you know, easily loosely. or randomly or loosely. Yes. So there is, again, go back to this mm. really higher being that's up there, which I don't know what it looks like or what it feels like, but. I mean, you the, the really the again it's it's a definition problem, right? It because because mm. you could you could say like yeah he's that kid is not like a is not a career artist it's not a you know professional artist is not a but if 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 all we're if all we're defining art as is expressing your truth and you know um, some sort of skill or something right um, some kid that's doing like a pretty bad drawing in my eyes is a beginner artist like he he is he's an artist mm. expressing himself herself however they feel mm. with the limited amount of skill they have and possess as, as, as a fucking four-year-old or whatever mm. you know um and maybe if they did and i'm sure if they continued that and they did it for the next 50 years they would be a fucking amazing mm. you know um so i see what you're saying like i i almost tend to feel like we're all artists in in different ways mm. um because we all have this like craving for self-expression. Mm. It's this, it's this weird fucking soul searching fuck mm. it. I remember, oh God, this was, this was a, like a theme in a couple of my acid trips when I, I was at festivals and I would, you know, I'd take acid and stuff and it's like, okay, what am I, this was my, okay, here's my thing, right? So, We would plan this event months in advance, right? We would have to drive, like pack everything in the car, right? Pack the whole car full of shit, just boom, boom, like fucking a whole morning full of packing. Quickly rush, get ready, get clothes, get this, get that. Don't forget the toothbrush. Don't forget the the, the torch, all the stuff, right? Go three hour drive down to this fucking somewhere in the middle of nowhere where they're going to have the festival, right? Drive down, get the ticket scanned, everything. Go down, set up, put up the fucking tents. You know, everything's good, blah, blah, blah. Right? Mm. Take the acid. Now what? <laughs> like, what? what is this all about? Why the fuck did we do all this shit and now we're here and what What are we actually doing? We're just <laughs> sitting down and like like looking at each other and just breathing. Mm. Like, like they, this is the, we could have done this anywhere. <laughs> you know, we could have done this anytime there's nothing, nothing changed. Right. Like we're just doing the same shit. And what are people doing? They're just like going to this, this self, this place we designated as the stage, mm -hmm. right? And dancing, which is what? Moving around, expressing yourself with your body to the, this music. And you're all just doing that together. Mm -hmm. Like, what's the point of that? What the fuck is the point, <laughs> right? Like I would just be sitting there like, what the fuck are we doing? What is this? And it, it just dawned on me that it's just, you just plan all this shit, do all this stuff, do all this extra work just to go somewhere and express yourself. That's the only reason anyone ever does shit. And it's just like, wow, right? Like that sort of realization to me is like, sort of gave, like, I, you know, it sort of gives a reason to why I do stuff, you know? Like, like as a kid, it's like, oh, I enjoyed magic i enjoyed this i enjoyed that you just you just know that you enjoy it so you do it and it's this all consuming thing of like i need to learn the new move i need to learn the, the skater cut i need to learn the mm. spring i need i need to learn i need to do this i need to and then you get to a point where like why mm. and then you realize like it's really only to like like if there was no one else alive in the world i probably wouldn't fucking bother yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> like like it's really only to just show that to other people in some way of way shape or form mm, mm. and like even if you're doing it to yourself it's more the ability to then share yeah right because again like if if i if i was stuck on an island by myself i probably pack, take a pack of cards because i'd be bored as fuck mm. but it's only in the hopes that someday i get off the island and i'm like yeah i'm amazing bro let me show you some shit that i learned yeah. 30 years on this island you know because yeah. otherwise what the fuck's the point of anything i always found it funny that um yeah when someone asked the questions like what if if you stuck on the islands, what magic book would you take? It's like, wow! If you don't have anyone to perform to, it doesn't matter what magic book you take. You're gonna, yeah. It's like, 
I agree 100% what you said. And also, I think it's audience is such a, the, the word spectators and audience is such a core element in order for something for magic to happen. Mm. I heard this interesting kind of um, um, analogy elsewhere from a friend of mine um, in Taiwan. He talks about like, if a tree was somehow kind of, you know, at, if the thunders actually hit the tree elsewhere, somewhere in the world, and it falls, it, it falls underground, mm -hmm. and no, one's, no one else to see it, mm. Right, so are you gonna say it never really happens? Mm. But you know, like it's an interesting look, um, and it kind of also he, he well sort of give himself a reason saying that it's okay that it's fine without you know without the audience. Mm -hmm. But then again, um, everything that we do everything's the book uh, all these things that's being published or, or uh, ev pretty much every magic that we do everything every theories all the tricks is designed for the spectators mm. is designed for another human being mm. right and if we lose that element then can magic really exist right right uh, yeah i had this lengthy argument with uh, xavier spade about, about <laughs> this and he was i was saying like you're not a magician if you never perform right because well that was my idea at the time it was more of like a controversial idea that i had and i was like i'm gonna put it out there mm. i don't necessarily agree with it but basically my idea was magic only becomes magic when it's performed mm. because in reality it's just like a set of moves it's like a, it's like a juggle mm. like it's a it's a hard difficult endeavor yeah. but it's only magical to someone that doesn't know the method yeah Right. So it's sort of like, it's like slights transform into magic when it's seen by someone that doesn't know how it's done. Right. Right. So I was saying, if you never perform and you just do slights, you're doing slights. You're a, a slight doer. You're not a magician because you're not actually creating the magic. Mm, you know, mm, mm, mm. that was my idea. And he was like, no, no, because blah, 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 whatever. Like, I don't, I don't want not, the point isn't to get the discussion. I just had a cool idea. I thought I was fun. Mm. Uh, and then people got mad. <laughs> <laughs> but um, people can get mad but easily. It's funny because yeah. even though, even though like, okay, so how you said, right? If a tree doesn't fall in the forest, blah, blah, blah. And that's like a way to, it's a way to, for magicians to be like, we don't need the spectators to do magic and we can do it for ourselves. But that's true. Okay. Okay. Now you name me one magician that creates magic and then never shares it with anyone. I mean like magicians, like, like doesn't put out a book, doesn't, you know what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? What I'm saying? So even if you don't perform for, for non-magicians, hmm. if you're someone that creates magic, you're going to share it with magicians or you're going to share it with your friends or you're going to like, you're not going to come up with this crazy new fucking sh false shuffle and then just take it to your grave and never show anyone. Exactly. Cause I, it, well, if I can name one, that means he, how can I even name it? Right. Like, right. because that means he will never publish stuff before that. And I, I don't know the existence right. of this individual. Right. right? Yeah. Even yeah. if they are a creator that doesn't perform, my mm. point is they still do it for other people. Yeah. Yeah. You know you what I mean? You still have to have this, point B, there's someone, something do you want to share with? Yeah, because right? it, again, it comes from that place of self-expression. Yeah. A, a magician that creates is trying to create, like to express themselves within the medium of magic, even if it's not for the non-magicians, mm. you know? Mm. Like like Matthew Beek, Beek, I don't know what, like Beesh, that, yes. yeah, Beesh. Mm. That guy, like create, create some crazy shit mm. that he barely, as far as I understand, he barely ever performs just to like, create stuff, right? Mm. So, I mean, he did perform on F Fool Us, I think, and Fool Them. Yeah. But <clears throat> that trick's insane, by the way. <laughs> um, but even that guy, you know, like I'm sure he does it for the the joy that he gets to contributing to the to the art of magic, mm. you know, and that's still a, a form of self expression. Yeah. Yeah. Because Verlin, like for example, everything's the way do um, shuffle and say palmings or. Uh, false shuffle, everything that we do, you know, the book that you read, it's keep telling us, even Divern and say, be natural, be natural. Um, but then the onlooker, right? There, there has to be some sort of 
second individual, per, second persons or another parties involved. Otherwise, the you, you create a palm and and it has to be un, uh, like you know like audience cannot detect that you're palming the car. And but then like all these details that everyone is publishing about like uh, the variations, different type of methods, these are all kind of performed against the spectators. Mm. Therefore you put that in the book, mm -hmm. right? And what, what's the other one? And if, if it doesn't work again, we don't want to say against as if it's magician versus audience, but oh, yeah. in, in some case there is like, like in some levels there, that dynamic exists mm. and that dynamic doesn't have to be malicious. Mm. It can be fun. It can be, um, you know, it can be playful. Yeah. But that dynamic exists because the the whole point of magic is to try to fool the audience, right? Like, I mean, to create a magical moment, but you achieve that by making sure that the audience doesn't know how you do the the, the magic. That you yeah. you make sure that the method is is uh, is hidden. Mm. And so, um, if let's say you create something and a hundred percent of the time you perform it people would know how it's done. Right. That's that's not magic. That's mm. like that's not a good trick, like yeah. by definition, right? Mm. And so you have to use the the audience as a metric to say, yes, this this trick is good mm. because it works. I've yeah. tried it and it works, right? Yeah. Like here's a good idea. Here's a good example. Uh, when I was learning how to palm, I had an idea. I said, okay, I have a palmed card in my hand. Yeah. What's oh do you want to move that to the center of the cup? It's gonna keep rattling. Yeah, just like put it in the center and it won't rattle. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. All right. So um okay. The okay, I palmed the card. We're in this position now. I need to re re put this card back in the deck mm. secretly. Mm. All right. The most obvious method that came comes to mind. It seems like it should work. Like that. Mm. Well, you try that and you get caught. 100% of the time. <laughs> and that's what happened to me. Yeah. And it's like, but that makes sense because you're covering it and by the time you take your palm away, it's you don't see it. And surely, but if you think about it, it's just a, not a natural movement. If you're going to pick up this pack of cards, I'm not going to do this, mm. right? Like that doesn't just, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, you might do this. You might do, you might go like, like you know, you might grab the edges. You, you wouldn't cover the whole card. Like it's just a very obvious like, placement of the hand you know and so then you figure out other ways that you can do it you know you might you might uh do a, a overhand shuffle and then mm. boom that's a much more nat natural way of doing it mm. the idea is that sometimes things that seem like they should work because it's like in theory like yeah my hand's covered mm. uh there's no flash there's nothing flashing like you know it's all covered everything's good it should work then you try it against an audience and it's like no that that that's trash an audience will get that give you that level of feedback. Mm -hmm. That's how you improve, right? Mm -hmm. That's how you say this one doesn't work and therefore you try another method. Yeah. 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 And that like same, same with martial arts. And I mean, like I, I'm going to get on a lot of people's tits, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of like um, martial arts that don't involve sparring, mm. you know, like, like active resistance. Right. And so, uh, you know, I, I want to single out a bunch of arts, but Aikido, you know, Aikido, you know. Ooh, okay. Uh, okay, but like, th so there's a couple of people that are like legit Aikido guys, um, but Aikido by its, for example, Aikido, right, by itself mm. is a lot of it is um, choreographed, let's say. Like right. you're not res you're not resisting the guy as mm. he's trying to wrist lock you. You're grabbing him and you're going with the move. Mm. You're just allowing it to happen. Mm. Now you try and see what, guy on the street is going to allow you to break his wrist mm. and we'll, we'll have another talk, you know? So it's the same idea. It's like, if you don't test it in a real environment, mm. you don't know if it works. Right. And like the, like, for example, I don't know if you follow UFC, but that was the premise of UFC one, the very first UFC that ever happened, you know, UFC, like the fighting cage fighting. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's like the main organization is called UFC. Um, yeah, you have all these people um, watching. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But fight. like the very first one that ever happened was okay, we have all these various martial arts. Right. Let's put them all in like in a tournament and see who wins. Mm -hmm. That was the idea, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's the first time we got to, you, got it, you were able to see a kung fu guy versus a karate guy, a karate guy versus a sumo guy, a judo guy versus this, right? And so we sort of. Now, because we've like gone through many, many iterations of like 
you know, now there's no no longer like, oh, what's the best martial art? It's you have to do everything. Right. If you do, if you don't do striking, takedowns, wrestling, submissions, everything, you're gonna you're gonna be trash because yeah. you some guy's gonna come on, come along. He's gonna do something you don't know, and it's game over. You know. Mm. So, um, it's the same thing, right? Like if you don't actually have an audience to to practice on, that's why the selling magic is so interesting and it's so mm. scary sometimes. Because you come up with this act, like yes, it's been vetted. Yes, you've uh, you, you know you've like worked with other magicians, all the other magicians, and they've thrown input and stuff. Mm. But at the end of the day, we're magicians, yeah. And so what we think might not be what the audience thinks because mm. we we're so far removed from the audience's mindset. Yeah. Sometimes I'm I'm surprised at what the audience focuses on, mm. like, you know least expected place right sometime. right yeah. like i've just been like with the tiktoks because we're doing tiktoks for the for the for this podcast and sometimes like the thing that goes viral i'm like <laughs> why did this go viral and not the other thing you know how much harder the other thing is right, the other yeah. thing took me like seven years mm. to learn this one's like a fucking thing i could teach you in five minutes like it's 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 mind-boggling sometimes yeah you know um but yeah so then you test it on the audience and then you go oh okay that part definitely needs like redoing and this yeah. part is really good and you know this and that yeah yeah but now you see the contradictions of that higher being right like that higher being kind of prevent me from doing magic because every time when i thought of that magician that's up there and that means no i shouldn't be performing because i haven't reached that level yet but then equally you need to test you need to kind of keep yeah. testing that out right in order to reach that level you need to keep testing it out 100% yeah. 100% so it is again back to in beginnings that sometimes you just shouldn't be too harsh on yourself you know like if you deliver a performance that's you don't think it's up to the standard then take a break you know a few days but then come back to it keep working on it and yeah, eventually, once you kind of clear your mind and you sit down, think about it, yeah, it's not a big deal, right? Mm, like, yeah. Yeah, remember that first performance? It just... <laughs> <laughs> the kids <laughs> and uh, toddler. Oh, and <laughs> God. That was, that was a... But the thing is, like, I've... Because I've done so many, like, gigs... Now, the gigs that I do, I've done, a lot of the gigs that I've done are, like, just bars mm. like they're, they're just a regular gig at a bar right and uh you know it would be like three hours on a friday three hours on a saturday mm. now a lot can happen during like six hours at a bar yeah in the weekend <laughs> okay <laughs> a lot of bullshit a lot of fucking annoying shit a lot of bad audiences yeah so to me like that audience wasn't that bad mm. it's just mm. not as good as we usually get i yeah you know what i mean like, I was like, oh, this isn't the worst that, you know, it could be much right. worse than this. Because <laughs> they don't expect to see magicians. Yeah, right? like yeah. People paying ticket to see something, what, what's going on in something magic. So yeah, there's yeah. sort of, they're already kind of trying to suspend their disbelief. Mm -hmm. Whereas, um, yeah. But even with, even with those, like, you know, I, I felt like even in that show, that was kind of not very good. Mm -hmm. um, there was obviously that one, like... There was kids that shouldn't have been there, which we need to be more specific about. It's not a kids show, motherfuckers. Stop bringing your kids, <laughs> all right? Um, but so that that's that's one thing. Um, the second thing is, like, there was a couple of like older people in the crowd, mm. and I know just generally speaking, because I've performed to older people, right. they don't they often don't react very crazy. Like, mm. you're not gonna get the same reaction as you're gonna get from like an 18 year old like Tongan dude, like that. You know what I mean? Like. Mm. culturally just everything is different you know yeah. what i mean and so i've already i would like i was expecting like them not to go like oh my oh! you know like that's not gonna happen she's 70 years old like come on you know um so i i knew they were they were impressed i knew like i could tell they were engaged and in, in you know so i was like okay cool but yeah then there was that guy that just wasn't keen mm. and then uh yeah the pizza halfway through the show was a bit of <laughs> someone ordered a pizza midway through my act bruv midway through my act i mean <laughs> come on man <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, we shouldn't be complaining though. There's so many there's so many cl uh, comedy clubs where they have that arrangement. Mm. But the thing in comedy is that you can start talking shit. Yeah. I could yeah. I could start talking shit about the pizza lady coming in, you know? Whereas if it's a magic if it's a magic show, I can't just all of a sudden start calling them out, you know? That's like people 
think I'm being a dick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess you can. Like, it's only to, you. You only have to embrace the consequences, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, comedians can sometimes get over it, but then magicians. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're just bunch of nerds that who doesn't want <laughs> conflict, right? <laughs> well, I don't. I mean, I don't mind the conflict. Yeah, but but it's just. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's rough in these streets. Yeah, I wouldn't know how I would handle it, but the good thing is because um, the light is quite bright, so I te- technically <laughs> I cannot see anything. So I just look beyond the first row right, of the right. spectators, yeah, and yeah, yeah. I was like, "Yeah, I can't really see anything." So uh, yeah, whatever happens, um, um, downstage, I was like, "Fine." Mm. Yeah, I I actually think like I don't know, like the the perf- like being a good performer, like having that like all those experiences. I don't know that I necessarily would do anything like that much different than any, like, let's say that someone that hasn't performed as much, you know what I mean? I just think it's a confidence thing. Mm. Like I've been through a lot of shit. So it's like, oh, this isn't that bad. I can just keep doing my thing. Whereas a newer guy would be like, oh my God, this doesn't, didn't go as according to plan. Mm. And then, then it will just start spiraling, you know? Whereas I think like, I don't know that I've necessarily got some crazy skill that I could get out of bad situations necessarily. Mm. I just am confident that whatever happens is okay, you yeah. know? Um, but in saying that, like that that confidence goes away so fast, dude. Mm. Like my first, that first show we did, not this, um, not the last Something Magic, I was shitting myself. The one that you did with uh, um, Dice. Yeah. yeah, I was shitting myself. Like the way you were backstage, that was me in that show. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. So like if you don't perform for a little bit, mm. that shit leaves. Like mm. that confidence is gone. Mm. Like at least for me, bro. Like I, like if, after COVID, I was freaking out. Mm. Like any sort of performance. Yeah. So this podcast actually helps me because I can, I get to somewhat perform every week. Yeah. Somewhat. Like not even, you know, it doesn't have to be a full mm. performance, but even like a few card tricks here and there, it keeps my like, confidence level up mm. you know <laughs> and also like the fact that we are, we were able to do a second show which is really big help because um second one obviously we already know what can well given all the situation that's happening for the first first what what can go even worse right mm. so the second one is a really really good confident boost right right and if in, the- in saying this if you were like if you like would have come to any of the shows you wouldn't even you'd be like oh what are you talking about that was a great show like I know, cause cause I know bad shows. Like I've, you know what I'm saying. Like yeah. you would have been like, oh, this is, what are you talking? About? It's it's our inner critic. It's our inner perfectionistic mm. artist bullshit. That's like that could have been better. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like so yeah. so to an audience. Like I had friends in the audience in the first show, and they were like raving, ranting and raving wow, okay. about that show. They're like bro, that was fucking mean. It was so worth coming out. Blah 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 blah. And this is friends that like, you know, they're they're not necessarily like. Like they wouldn't do that just to please me. Like they wouldn't mm. say that if it, they didn't feel like it was good, if that makes sense. Like it's good they don't, that, you know what yeah. I mean? So like, this is our perspective because we're just fucking artsy yeah. motherfuckers, <laughs> you know? But yeah. 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 I actually feel, you know, like for me personally, I feel just really weird um, bringing my kind of friends over. Uh, I invite them to the show, but then I almost wish they never come. Mm. Like, um, I'm hoping they they can come to the second. They could come to the second one, but you know the first one. It's like part of me feel like, yeah, what I was doing for the first show just um, probably isn't the image that I sometimes portraying to them, right? And mm. always, um, I s- probably just see myself as this kind of casual and sometimes make a lot of joke, but then it might. It's sort of like experiment. Mm. Um, for the for all the whole thing, but that yeah. that's what the show is supposed to be, right? Yeah. So it, I think the expectation is there. It's set from the very beginning. Mm. Like this is experimental. Like, yeah. I mean, I might, I might, I came out one in one show being like, oh, I'm an alcoholic. I'm not an alcoholic. <laughs> I I don't. I barely ever drink. Are you, you know? not? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm drinking You're right drinking. now. Yeah. But look at my one is still having. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm about to have a second one. <laughs> nah, like so. The thing is, okay, if I. This is the the honest truth, right? If it's it's a completely ego driven thing as well. Mm-hmm. If I drink properly, if I have like more than three drinks in a night, my cardio is fucked for the next week. Like like if I drink three drinks on a Saturday, I still have bad cardio on the Tuesday. Wow. 
Wow. Okay. Like it, it, it's noticeable. Hmm. Like you don't notice it. I don't notice it if I don't train hard. But if you redline your body, if you push really hard, hmm. like <clears throat> you'll know your like limit. You know what I mean? Like I know. Okay, I'm right now with my cardio level. I I should be able to do like like three to four competitive rounds back to back, no rest, mm. Sh- easily. Should be right. Right. If I have three three to four drinks on Monday, I'll do two rounds and I'll be fucked on the third one, mm. and then I'll lose the third one. Like I'll get my ass beat by someone I shouldn't be getting beat by, and I'm like mother like, and then I'm like pissed, right? So I'm not gonna risk that situation because it's really like getting choked by someone you shouldn't be getting choked with <laughs> is a worse feeling than doing mad doing worse magic than you think you should be able to do right because you're actually yeah. getting like physically in, not injured but like it it's uncomfortable mm. all right so mm. so yeah uh yeah like i'm not yeah for me alcohol is like it's it's a social lubricant but mm. yeah i don't i don't know how people can drink every like i mean i guess they don't they don't work out and stuff like that but like people that drink every day it's just like I would feel so bad. Like yeah. you would just feel like trash every time, bro. Like I don't, I don't get it. Yeah. I never really a heavy drinker as myself. Yeah. But um, anyway, so yeah. in one of the acts, that was my character that I was playing. Yep. Now, if I was worried about what I was portraying, mm. you know, then I'd be like, what the fuck? But no, like that's a character I'm trying to, I'm playing around with the idea. Mm. You know, I might come out and do a completely silent act. Now I've talked in the past that the fact that I hate silent acts, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, uh, until I saw Shin's live act, like, cause the thing with me is like, I get bored. So I'll watch a silent act and I'm like, like, there's nothing like, it's just a lot of this, a lot of music, a lot of hand gestures, a lot of waving. Like I'm like, get to the, you know, entertain me. Right. Like, you know, um, but then when I saw it live, I realized that the engagement that you have when you're live mm. is different to just watching it on a, on YouTube, mm. you know? Yeah. And so I was like, oh, okay. Silent acts work really well live mm. for me. Yeah. But on, on, on like video mm. it's not as engaging as something like really funny with patter and stuff. Yeah. Like I'll watch a Bill Malone act any day of the week. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. I remember you react to it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Bill Malone, <laughs> Bill Malone, yeah, baby. Yeah, sometimes like the it's it's all depend on you know like the type of yeah like watching live. I actually have a thought about that. Um, so uh, I had a talk with uh, again a friend of mine um, back in Taiwan, and in order to improve the magic, right the reading books so, so there's always an argument about reading books and watching dv uh, re, uh, watching a dvd mm. um for me you know i am the book collectors myself you aren't or you are i i, I am you are but i and if you just read books and watch dvd you will never get as good as someone who perform and watch someone else perform mm. all right um, and you have to watch it live, right? Because by looking at someone else, you can start forming an opinion of what kind of magician you want it to be, mm. right? You can, less is more. That's um, you're starting with a, a piece of, I guess, a, a rock. And by watching someone else perform, you start chipping away mm. bit by bit. You take in, you remove the part that you don't like Mm -hmm. and eventually it falls into something you know you who you want to be right and if you just read books if you just watch dvd for me it's the same thing it's just media changing right people used to read books and then radio come in play and people learn magic also from the radio around world war one world war two period um and eventually the media come in, right? The media and such as went, TV. And then it went full circle and it's back to podcasts, radio. So <laughs> <laughs> is it what we're going for? <laughs> yeah, World War Three. it's podcasts. Not, yeah. not, not radio, podcasts. <laughs> yeah, that's the technical term. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. So it's, you know, it's just a media. It's an information changing. Mm. So the way that information perceived in different era. Reading a book similar to watching the DVD, but 
it will never be the same as watching someone else perform. Mm. So I feel like to get good at magic, you have to watch other magicians perform. Yeah. When I watch you, when I watch Dev, Ellen's, um, I think, well, this, well, you know, Edward, Edward Yu, mm-hmm. right? Um, I hang out with him quite a lot. Mm-hmm. And whenever he performs, I always learn a things or two from him. Right. So, and then I start taking few bits and pieces that I like. Mm. And eventually, you know, you, you don't want to be the exact person of, you know, other magicians, but eventually you're like, you just form your kind of, you form, form into diamonds, right? Mm. Yeah. Sort of way. What I will say about that, <clears throat> I mean, like I watched just purely by doing the YouTube stuff. Mm. I ended up watching a lot of magic. So I think like performance style stuff, I, I got a lot of influences mm. floating in my head just from like reviewing and reacting to a bunch of different people and people would recommend people and I would watch them and, you know, um, what I do find with books though, and I, I struggle with reading magic books because oftentimes it's like a cookbook. Yes. You know, and like, I'm not going to read every single recipe before I even try one, you know, like fuck's the point. I'm going to look for the lasagna. If I'm feeling like lasagna that day, I'm going to look for the lasagna chapter, pick the one that I like, and then try to make it. And then the book goes back on the shelf and I'm not going to touch it for the next time until the next time I want lasagna. Or maybe the next time I want some fried shrimp, then I check the fried shrimp section. That's kind of how I, how I read magic books. But what I will say is that because there's no visual uh, medium in the, in the book form, I can read a description of a magic of a piece of magic and I start one, I start getting ideas of how I would make that effect work or like, if it, so I, I will read the, the, the description before I even read the, the method. Mm. And I'll, I, oftentimes I'll come up with really creative ways that aren't the way that they, they explain in the book, mm. different ways of coming up with that thing. And it, it's so, sort of like an exercise in creativity for me. Yeah. So that can help. On the other side, on like on the same side, but like in a, in a different way, if I'm reading, like actually just going by how the book tells you to to perform that and like how to do the method, mm. oftentimes I completely avoid the presentation part. Mm. I don't give a, f- don't tell me what you say. Don't tell me the pattern. Like that annoys me in books mm. because I don't need this. Like I will come up with my own way to present this. Mm. Just give me the method. And then sometimes they have little like details and stuff, which is nice. Um, but then the, the the presentation becomes very, very unique because I don't use any of like any pre-existing notions as an influence. Mm. I just take the the raw bones of the trick and I say, how do I, how would I do this? Right. And then I, you know, but I feel like that's, that comes after a point where you already have a feeling of what your style is, a feeling of what you would do, a feeling of having seen a lot of magic. Mm. And it's like, okay, what would I do here? What, you know what I mean? I feel like if you take a complete beginner, like that's never seen any magic and you give them a method hmm. and you go make the best thing and they won't, they won't know what to do with it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I, I, I do think it can be useful to have restrictive information because hmm. if you watch a DVD, you're getting that guy's presentation, that guy's handling, yeah. that guy's quirks. Hmm. Now all of a sudden, like if I, if I, you know, do a Danny Dow Ortiz trick, hmm. I feel like I need to go, how do you say? How do you say? Yeah, <laughs> like, like, like you know, I speak perfect English, bro. Yeah. I know how to say well, whatever I'm trying to say. Mm. But I all of a sudden, because I've seen Danny perform this so much, it's like yeah. I need to also have broken English. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, I'm, I obviously don't do that. But the point is, it, yeah, it can really help with creativity. I mm. think. Yep, hundred percent. Like the imagination is a key driving force um, when reading a magic books. Um, like you said, for me, the reason why I have so many ma- magic books is, well, there's a Japanese term, I believe it's called um, tonkutsu. Mm. It's the way of collecting the book, but not reading them. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm a, I'm a master then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a complete expert. Well, yeah, but then <laughs> you're, you're not really collecting the books, right? But um, if I eventually you know have a um, place where i stay then i will probably just lay out all my magic books um and for me it's all about connecting the dot right? um i think we have this discussion about 
should you really read magic books cover to cover? Um, my my answer is and it's a wrong question. It's like why why would that be an objective right um, for you? Because like you said, and you're hundred percent right. The it's like a cookbook, like what ingredients you want.、Mm. And first, I feel like in order to get the best out of it. You have to put yourself in a cage.、Right? You have to limit yourself of what you want. What's your goal, and what are you pursuing from the magic book?、Um, and I'm pretty sure there is a YouTuber out there. I think it gave me the inspiration of when you open a book, doesn't matter what book it is, you have to answer five、um, questions. Like, I think it's big W,、um, for example, why, how,、um, when, that sort of question, or、mm. who,、um, etc. But to to sort of show comprehension is what you mean, right? Yeah,、like、yeah. That yeah. you understand what the book is about, or well, it's more to do with what you want to get out of、oh, before you even reading it. Ah,、oh, before you read it. Before、gotcha. you even reading it, yes. So,、um, it's almost like when you move to a new place and the house is all empty, you don't know where to begin.、Mm. The key thing is limit yourself, choose a corner, and then from there. You start building everything around it, right? Right.、Yeah. So for me, reading magic book is sort of similar things. You kind of there's a reason you should when you buy the book, you should know why you buy the book in the first place.、Mm-hmm. Like you, whether you like this author or you appreciate his magic, or you kind of heard someone else talking about it, right? But you're someone that at least in previous conversations said that you read books cover to cover. I did, right? Yeah. So what are you like? You know, like,、uh, what's the question you're answering? So in that, in that scenario, yeah. So I'm lucky. I had time to do that from、mm. because I've been doing magic for fifteen, almost sixteen years now, and I was able to read magic books cover to cover from between fifth year to maybe twelfth years、mm. in magic, and I feel like there has to be a stage where you're deducting that process. Because now I'm kind of fully, I already accumulate the knowledge,、mm-hmm. and I feel like nowadays when I read magic books, a lot of things are already re- pretty repetitive. Right. Yeah. So I can self-processing that information before I even start reading whatever trick that、mm. is. Yeah. 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 Whereas, like for me, I'm still discovering shit. Like I'll I'll, I'll stumble across something just、yeah. by. My own way of reading, which I'm just fucking flicking through, seeing labels and names and shit. Like, oh, that's interesting. Let me read into that.、Mm. Like, I'm very sporadic with how the fuck I,、mm. <laughs> like, I don't have any process. Like for the selling magic, I was literally like, okay, I want a mentalism act. Take all the mentalism books off、mm-hmm. my shelf, put them down, and just start flicking. Anything that catches my eyes, ah,、uh, looks shit. Looks shit. Looks shit. Look,、mm. let me look at that. Ah,、uh, ah,、oh, I can't see myself doing that. All right,、mm. yeah. Like,、mm. like I'm just very like, you know, I. The 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 thing for me is like, I'm like in the in this sense, right? I enjoy what I enjoy about magic. It's changed throughout the years. Okay, so initially it was it was the the journey of 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 developing card moves that I could show off to my friends because we were doing stuff together, right? So then it became like they kind of stopped. Stop doing stuff. So then it became like, oh, okay.、Uh, then I just do it for myself, like fidgeting stuff. Like you know, I'll, I'll, I would still like spring. I would still, you know, do cardistry, do some hard moves. Maybe I'd come up with something, but nothing really. Then, then I started going doing the YouTube stuff, and I was like, okay, now I need to like to learn magic to to show on camera. So that became a new a sort of a new goal of my, of my magic. Right. Right. Then it became performing. Okay, I need to perform. I need to, I need to get routines,、mm. and so. It's shifted, but as it shifted, the reading and the the sort of the research became a, a focal point of like, oh, I'm trying to to achieve this goal. Yes, right.、Yeah. I need more magic for my YouTube. I need more magic for this. Yeah. It, I, I've, I, I have not had hit a stage where I'm like, I just enjoy the process of accumulating magic knowledge.、Mm-hmm. Like that has yet to be a real. Yeah. Like. F- Fun aspect for me.、Mm. For me, the fun is having a piece of knowledge and seeing how I can slot it somewhere.、Mm. The accumulation part isn't the fun part.、Mm. It's the like the deck switch, right? 
Mm-hmm. It's the, oh, I have an idea for the deck switch. Cool. How can I make it work? Right. That is fun. Yeah. Like designing the routine around this thing. Mm. It, yeah. The finding the thing has never been fun for me. Mm. So that's why I think I struggle with the book stuff because that's all about finding the thing. Right. Finding the information, finding ideas. Yeah. And so not to say that like I don't have any sort of enjoyment, but yeah, like I'm, I'm like, okay, let me learn it so I can get to the fun part. Like that's how I sort of view it, which is probably not the right way to view it, mm. but yeah. So that's why it's perplexing to me when you go, "Oh yeah, I just read it for the for the pure enjoyment of discovery," and I'm like, "Jesus Christ, I wish I could do that," <laughs> you know. But then the problem uh, uh, arises relatively quickly because you, it's sort of you have freedom to do this, but then when does it end? Right, your that's why I decided to stop that process because when you receive a book and you read, the goal is to read from cover to cover. That means you're not actually reading. You're just reading it for the sake of finishing the book from point A to point to B. To say, oh yeah, I've read it. Yeah, you read it and then you put it back in the shelf. Yeah. But then nowadays when I look at it and when I remove that book from the bookshelf, when I open it, I was like, holy shit. I, why didn't I read this, you know, why didn't I read it clearly last time? Mm. And everything kind of, you know, just like, oh, this this is such a good thing. And I couldn't believe I missed it. Because back in the day, I was like, I have to read, I have to finish to the very last page. Mm. And that's the only goal, right? Which is, again, when I think back on it, it's, um, I appreciate that, uh, well, my, I appreciate myself that I actually finished the whole process. But then, I would never go back to reading right. cover to cover right. because yeah. It reminds me of, um, I was, I, I recently just got back into chess. Um, mm. friend of mine <clears throat> from actually one of the best New, New Zealand grapplers, Maddie. he's probably not watching this, but if you are shout out right there, um, one, like literally pound for pound top New Zealand grappler. Um, he was like, Oh, yo, like I know you used to play chess. Mm. And I'm like, he's like, Oh, teach me when you, when I, when I come back where he's in the Aussie right now. All right, cool. And then I'm like, oh, fuck, I haven't played chess in like <laughs> legit like 13 years, right. like properly. Yeah. You know, like I used to I used to do like club, like go to clubs and like play in like local club tournaments and shit. And I jump on like the chess websites and I'm like, oh, yeah, like I used to be like 1400 rated, you know, like, oh, right, like, yeah. you know, I, the highest I got to was like 1550 or something in like. World. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, ELO, okay. ELO, ELO. Okay, this okay. is like, like the, the, the notation that they use to like tell you how good you are the the the, the, like a grandmaster's 20 2400 so like that's like the the cutoff i would have probably if i competed in an official tournament that 1400 would probably be like 1100 Mm. so it's like pretty bad for for competitive play but like against any normal person that's like you're gonna mop the floor with them right all right so I'm like, oh yeah, cool. I'm probably like four, still 1400. Maybe maybe I dropped because I haven't played in so long. Or maybe I dropped like 200 points. Mm. You know, that's fine. I play some games. I'm like legitimately 700, bro. Like like I've lost like, ha- like li- I'm like half the points that I used to. I'm like, Jesus Christ, I'm trash. So I started doing puzzles again. I started yeah. fucking reading up. I'm like, bro, I cannot, this is embarrassing. Like, right. you know what I mean? Like, like 12 year old me would have fucked me up in yeah. chess. And so I'm, I'm just like like doing research, and I was I was looking at this forum, and this guy was like, "Man, I'm reading these chess books, but it's taking me so long. Like, how do you guys read these?" And it's like, mm-hmm. he's like, "Like, dude, you don't read it. You you set up the board, mm-hmm. and you do like like a, a problem a day. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't even go for a page a day. That's like like chess books are like fucking math problems. It's like doing textbooks for math. Yeah, like you're not gonna." Like, oh yeah, let me go cover to cover on this textbook. What, mm. what the fuck you mean? It's like a year's worth of work. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, like oftentimes the idea of like, oh, I need to finish this. Mm. And it's like, no, you need to actually like assimilate the information. You need to yes. sit down and like, okay, what is he doing? Yeah. How is he setting it up? Okay, where's the card moving? Work through the material, work yeah. through the moves. Like if you just like, if you read fucking uh, Encyclopedia of Card Tricks, Mm-hmm. that fucking book has so much cart magic in it. <laughs> like if I, if you actually sat there and went through, like you mm-hmm. physically went through every trick, I feel like it would take you months. Yep. So that's why Vernon says, use your head, right? Like uh, after a trick, he finished reading a trick. He would just, you know, drop, not even touching the deck. He would just put both hands in the pocket, walk out, 
mm. and then just you know walk the areas a bit for like three or four loops and then he would just keep thinking about the trick just keep digesting what he just read and what can he do and then without like simulating the movement with the hand he would just just think use the head yeah um i think i i, I read oh, i love this beautiful quote i'm Try not to um, sabotage it. So Eldon Jones says the um, the space between the notes is what create the music, and there's this quote saying the space between each paragraph creates meaning. Mm. Right, and then that's when you read the paragraph page by page or paragraph by paragraph, you stop, you pause, you digest. And that's how you really get the best out of the book, mm. best out of a chapters or best out of anything. You just think about it, like your friend just said, right? When you're doing the chess, then chess board, you read and you know you digest that information, mm. and instead of the goal of finishing whole things at all at once. So it was. Yeah, I've actually realized this. Like all my best ideas come when i'm doing boring as shit <laughs> like like i'm at work fucking cleaning tiles or something you know just like oh god damn it i gotta do my hours so i can pay fucking rent right and my headphones die so i can't listen to a podcast i'm like fuck right so i'm just sitting there fucking like cleaning grout or whatever the fuck i'm doing and all of a sudden my mind goes hmm what if you move the card from here to here? What if you, mm. and, I, and then my heart, my mind goes and I'm just, I'm just doing the most boring shit, but my mind's like racing at like a million miles an hour. And I'm wondering if like, let's say this podcast takes off and I'm like, we, we quit our jobs and everything's all Gucci and we have <laughs> editors that are doing the editing and, and I got, I hire magicians to make ma magic for me. I don't think I'll ever fucking have another good idea in my life. Cause I'll be fucking around. I'll be playing video games and then I'll just come in do a quick podcast. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Morris. Uh, what, what's the trick that I'm supposed to be doing for this one? Oh yeah. Sweet, sweet. <laughs> Thanks for showing me. All right, cool. You know, like I, I feel like I would never get any sort of like creative high level shit mm. out there. Yeah. I would have to like force myself to, to like, I don't know, volunteer or something mm -hmm. just to be bored out of my mind to where the ideas start to flow. Mm. Because like, I've noticed this, like I'll have like all my, like literally I can't think of one idea that I've had that was like really good. This podcast was constructed while I was bored out of my mind building shit. Mm. Like I, I spent like almost a year plus building this audio studio mm. and I was the whole time. I'm like, how can I make a podcast? How can I do this for myself? How can I, you know what I mean? Like the whole time, like I'm just dying inside, but mm. my mind is like, it's trying to escape into a million possibilities. Mm. So I can see that. Like I can see that idea of like, don't touch the deck. Because mm. if you touch the deck, all of a sudden, now you're stimulated. Now, mm. now there's something to do. Yeah. Don't like have nothing to do. Then your mind will really take off. Mm. You know? Mm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um uh we can dive into this, but that's what Quantum Marie says the you kind of wanted to enrich your internal world, you know, mm. like not magic, enrich your own anything outside of magic um and read psychologies or and uh, do something else just don't think about magic for a while right and then the sometimes the best idea coming from those things that's outside of magic yeah yeah well that that was sort of the idea with the witchcraft thing right <laughs> but, <laughs> but then it turns out it was just a bunch of fucking psycho people exactly yeah i don't know what happened with those mofos to be honest with you <laughs> um so Samuel Pratt was on the podcast. I know you watched, I don't know how much you watched, but uh, he gave me the, uh, he gave me the tools that I needed. Yeah. To compl oh, God damn it. I was going to show you a perfect judo flip just then. I still, I'm still struggling with table. There we go. Oh, no. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Get in there. It's, it's um this, this, this concept he talked about the pocket. There we go. Yes. I, that that really helped me out. I think he did mention that I messaged him before, mm. right? That's the first thing that he sent it to me. Actually. Oh, really? But um, well, I actually cheated a bit because I cannot finish my judo flip with a full deck. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I yeah. can only use the half deck. And I know like Sam will probably look at this and say, no, don't fucking do this. 
Ah, that's probably right. fine to work your way up. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty scalable thing, right? I you can just keep so. adding cards. Yes, yes. Yeah. But but I, I spent, I don't know, I think the last two nights just judo, judo flipping, this mm. pinky is fucked. Like, I feel <laughs> it, like, you know what I mean? Like, as I pull down, I'm like, oh, that doesn't feel right. I feel like I, I slightly pulled it a little bit. The fact room. that you're still able to do it, it's um, pretty amazing. Like, I Yeah, it's yeah, this is this is a slightly incomplete deck. It's probably going to be easier. Here we go. This is the judo flip jam. Yeah. There we go. All right. Sam's legacy still remains. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's left the podcast, but he but he hasn't left our hearts. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I was reading. I, I was actually um, watching the whole thing while just constantly doing judo flip. Oh, um, practicing yeah. it. Yeah. Did you actually watch it last night? Like the night that you mentioned? Yes. You messaged me. You messaged me at like, what was it? Like 12 a.m. or some shit? Yeah. You're, you're like, why the fuck <laughs> did you post this at this time of night? You realize <laughs> I'm going to have to stay up and watch this. I'm like, good. <laughs> Feed the algorithm, baby. Uh, I actually like finish. Well, I finished. No, I didn't finish the whole thing at one go. But um, I guess on Thursday night, I kind of finish halfway mm. but then i finished the remaining one ah, yesterday. Yeah. nice nice yeah so it's um he's a, he's like he's really good at well i because i've i've jammed with him before mm. but we never you know when you're jamming in like a big room of magicians mm. you're never getting super super deep yeah it's exactly. just like oh here's some cool shit here's some cool shit hey, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. like it's just all over the shop you know I, I when you sit found, down mm, i yeah. always found really benefit when you only have a small group of magicians mm. um, probably one or two that's what then. i, I want to like like just not even recorded just some like jams here and just have like a couple people have some drinks have some whatever you know and this just like just like just chill and just fucking jam this is pretty much designed for it yeah like, exactly each yeah cup yeah yep. Each cup holder, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, what was that? I, I was gonna say, uh, mention something, but jamming Sam Pratt, uh, Sam Pratt. Oh, yes, so, um, there's something that also Tony Chen says, uh, it's which is quite controversial, but I think there is some truth in it. Mm. Say, um, for every magician out there who's under 18 years old, just don't do magic, just go do cardistry. <laughs> And after 18 years old, you come back, you know, and then you're, you already had a really good understanding of how to handle a deck of car. And yeah, that's true. Mm. But then how are you going to get, okay, let me, let me ask you this, right? <laughs> if you're 14 years old, mm. right. And you're just doing cardistry, right. How are you supposed to get pussy, man? <laughs> Who's going to, oh, nice judo flip. Here's, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If that's your eventual goal, yeah. Bro, if you're 14 years old and a male, that's your only goal. <laughs> Let's be honest. There's no other goal ever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and anyone who says otherwise is is full of shit, okay? Damn. So Harsh reality. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sure yeah. there's a lot of gay guys that are like, man, man. <laughs> hey, man, you can't be generalizing like that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> One of my, I guess, how I... I won't go into detail, but then there is a wait, wait, wait. Before you go off that topic, yeah, let's just clear up the clear up the whole thing, right? Let's let's put put this beside put this behind us, okay? Carters, don't get mad at us because magicians are just as much of virgins as everyone else. All right, <laughs> so let's let's not let's not try to make this like seem like oh, magicians are cool or anything. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. All right. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> Disclaimer, put a big <laughs> giant title yeah. on them. <laughs> yeah. Uh. No, um, so when I start magic in two or, well, I guess within a year, I did everything I can. Coin, cards, stage, or uh, well, I even did thimble act, mm. um, card manipulations. Um, but eventually there's a really, a really good friend of mine. Um, he still is. And he came to me um, and he said, Hey Morris, you're pretty good at everything, but equally you're quite shit, and <laughs> you're you're not mastering anything. Right, right. And Jack then, of all trades, master of none. Yes, and that and that moment, I give up magic completely. I gave up magic completely, and I dive myself into cardistry. Mm. That's when Dang and Dave start mm. you know, kind of booming, and then the things that you talk about mm. with Sand, yes, uh, from the last podcast. So um, that's kind of a a good turning point for me 
because I was able to do all these crazy like Pandora stuff, mm. and then and then I just dive into Carter Street. And um, I remember you showing that uh, one of these things. Yeah, I remember I used to do it. Yeah, all the time. yeah, yeah. So yeah. Nowadays, I can't do the original one. This is the original one where they go like that, yeah. uh, and then they do that. I just do a Charlier. I, I find it more interesting because I can mm. like that. Yeah, that to me is is more movement for layman. Yeah, yeah. But then Pandora is dope though. Pandora was difficult, like very hard. Even the, even I think it was Dave. No, I think it was Dan who would always do Pandora, and Dave would always do Jackson Five. Yeah. Even whoever whoever one was it was. Mm. Even they would need several takes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I can I could do Oof. until the very you know like yeah, that yeah, moment yeah. everyone making a mistake. But um, that being said, I kind of spend at least three or four years in with just doing the, these type of cuts. But then it's also really rewarding. And then I start when Tony Chen says that quote, I was like, oh, yeah, that's actually quite, mm. you know, it helps me um, one way or another, just getting really comfortable with a deck of cards, really. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's the that's true. But yeah. but I feel, see, I'm on the other side of the things where I, I wish I did more stage stuff mm -hmm. because I came up and I got, I, I don't know. I'm not really that great. Like, like I don't, I wouldn't say I'm like amazing with cards. Like I have some things I can do well and some things I don't even like, I can't bottom deal for shit. You know, like, like if you try, if you put a gun to my head, like do a good bottom deal, like I'm, I'm dying, you know, like it's, it's, it's over. Good to, good to know you. But like, I feel like because I spent so much time on cards and I went so deep on cards, I had so many holes in my knowledge mm. that it was almost like I, I couldn't even relate to magicians. Like I couldn't even, like, that people would go, oh yeah, yeah, the, the linking rings. And I'm like, I don't even know how that fucking works, mm. you know? Or like, like just, just or, or rope tricks or everything would fool me. Mm. Like I would go to the IBMs and I'm like, I'm, I mean, I think it's cringe because it's fucking rabbits on the table or whatever the fuck, you know? Mm. But like, there's nothing, like I don't know how that works. I don't know how any of it works. Mm. And so it didn't, allow me to appreciate any other aspects of magic that weren't cards if that makes sense i couldn't be like oh yeah that's a cool idea i should use that mm. you know or whatever mm. um and so i really struggled to to move away from cards for i mean i'm, I'm, I'm like just getting to that now mm. like you know I, I would go to gigs with two decks of cards in my hand in my pocket mm. both normal decks not not even gimmicks mm. a sharpie Sometimes double cross. That was like my little bridge to the non-card stuff. Mm. And then that ball. And that's it. Yep. And Omni deck, you know? Yep. So I like for me, like it was several years of struggling to try to like cut out cut out of the the, the card niche. Mm. But for me, I think I didn't I sort of looked down on other types of magic because I couldn't see myself justifying the props. I think that's mm. what it is. Mm. Like I still can't see myself go up there and do like a pairing cane. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, yeah. I, like, well, unless it's like a Kung Fu scene mm. where I'm like spinning a, but then again, I don't do Kung Fu. Mm. So it's like, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. You know, like it, it just like, I don't, what am I do? Like, what is, why am I manipulating balls? Mm. What the fuck? Like, am I playing pool? If right. I'm playing pool, then I can produce some pool balls. Then yeah, that's cool. Mm. You know? Mm. So I, I always found like it's these magician-y props mm. that clearly don't belong anywhere else but on a magician stage that yeah. are fucking weird. Mm. Like, to me, that was weird. Mm. And maybe it was to do with the fact that, like, I got picked on for liking magic by some people that mm. I was like, if I'm going to do magic, I need to, even if someone thinks it's uncool, I need to believe in it 100%. Mm. So if if I if someone's going to go, oh, lame, and I go, yeah, true, mm. then that's not a good... That's not a good sight. You know what I mean? Right. But if I, if the guy goes, that's lame. And I'm like, you're, you're lame. Like this is fucking mean, mm. you know? Cause if I carry cards with me and someone goes, why are you carrying cards? I'm like, get the fuck out of my face, dude. <laughs> like if you don't like cards, you're a fucking like, you know what I mean? Like I, yeah. I don't like you as a person, like straight up, mm. you know, like who doesn't, who doesn't like cards? All yeah. right. Like cards are just good time. Anyway, you can, you can gamble, you can do drinking games, mm. you can do cardistry, you can do magic, yeah. you can throw them. You can fucking hurt someone with throwing them, mm, you know? Mm, yeah. What is there not to love, man? Yeah, like you, <laughs> I mean, you this can is still- a nerd's, This is a nerd's uh, confession for the love of cards. No, you can still see <laughs> cards everywhere. Like whenever I go to someone else's party and they're 
will always be a deck of cards nearby. It's like one of those two dollar shop yeah, decks, yeah. deck of cards nearby, and people will just play with it. Like you know, like they played the title of game I no longer recognize because I'm like already forty, fifty, sixty years old, and these <laughs> Manelian Manelian kids, they um they born after two thousand. They were like doing sort of these type of game that I just don't recognize, but it is still a deck of cards, right? Right. Um, and again, like you say, in the stage magic. What parties are you going to? Jesus. Wow. Yeah, you don't, <laughs> probably don't want to know. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. No, but yeah. How do you justify, you know, like actually, so I read this rumor about Fizzin, um, the most recent Fizzin. Fizzin is uh, the world championships of magic, essentially. Yeah. Yep. Um, it's nerds competitions, um, but not. Nah, but it's like it's like the Olympics, for magic. quite prestige. Yeah. Yes, yeah. but um, they actually, I think they are about to ban the the all the act with animal. Mm. Yeah, I think uh, we talked about this at Sewing Magic. Yes, and I was uh, my my okay. So my initial response was, I don't give a fuck about animals' rights. I'm Romanian. Okay, <laughs> so let's be let's be real out here, right? Yeah. Like. It's not that I don't care about animals' rights. It's just I, I don't have any sympathy for people that are like, how can you eat the 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 poor? It's like, dude, like if you grew up how I grew up, mm. you would be eating fucking the cutest bunnies you've ever seen, and you'd just be like, yep, put it in my oven, you yeah. know? Like that's just that's just life, man. You you breed shit, you you grow it, mm. you kill it, you eat it. Like that's you, you know, we had these fucking I can't even I don't even know what they're called in in English, but we had nutri, which is like some sort of animal. You we just raised it for the for the fur, mm. and like this was in a not a rural area. This was in a city. Mm. We had like some space, some some garden space, mm. and we just had like fucking you know cages with animals that we'd grow and breed and everything. So it's mm. like and like all the neighbors had the same shit. Some people had bees. Some people had all sorts of stuff. But everyone was doing some sort of hustle, right? Because you need food, yeah. and food's expensive. And why would you pay it for someone if you can grow your own and it's organic and all this shit, right? So yeah. there's many different reasons. But the point is, you know, I'm not like one of these people that are like, you know, I can't, I can't get behind the sort of like, let's be vegetarian because of animals. It's like, well, I, I can understand the the environment. I can understand all this other stuff, mm. but like, let's let's figure out ways to be like ethically farming sure mm. but I, I i mean i don't like i don't want to <laughs> torture animals for the sake of torturing them yeah. but i just don't see the point but when um alan was saying that they clip their wings mm. like for the doves yes that's kind of fucked up yep and then yeah uh well they, they clip the legs actually and then the they, legs yeah the, yeah the leg and then they actually pulled it so um on this the pageant is kind of aware of it aware of it's about to be, get pulled um otherwise. wait 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 wait, wait. So, so wait so so magicians mm. that produce doves are we about to reveal secrets do, do they cut the legs <laughs> no, 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 they don't cut oh. they tight a thread oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. they tight a thread oh well, yeah i mean that's around. that's yeah. fine but the, the clipping of the wings right clip they clip the wings so they don't fly very far they can yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. well i guess that's the last place spca would look right <laughs> Because if you don't, the magician can be like, oh, yeah, yeah, trust me, they're treated fairly in the other dimension. You know what I mean? Yeah. In, the, if, in the other realm. If someone inspecting it, right, like, and insp come and inspect magicians' competitions, and they, they're not going to. Well, they, well, they also don't know how it's done. So yeah, so sure. you could a magician could say anything, right? Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they treat it fairly. They got they they got gr grass fields, everything, and the it, it's a portal in this box. And then yep. when they come out the portal, it's all good. Don't worry about yep. it. They're definitely not squished in my pocket. Yeah, <laughs> we use lie to tell the truth. And yeah, yeah, tell yeah, the truth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not yeah. anyone else. Yeah, so that's that's the last place animal rights is gonna. But it turns out that they're they're doing it already. So. Yeah, but um, surely like like some of those bunnies that like that they use and shit, they're not, they're not. There's nothing bad with those. I think it just what will be probably the way that start treating animals. You'll never pull rabbits' um, ears, right? You always want to, you know, just hug it up. And oh, then, you can grab yeah. it by the back of the the skin. Yeah, yeah. That like it doesn't hurt them. The mothers take, do that to their kids. Yeah, you but, wouldn't grab the ears. That's fucked up. Yeah, but then what? Whichever part you grab, people still have opinion about it, right? Yeah, so. But like, if if literally the mother of the bunny mm. is doing it to the bunny mm. with its teeth, yeah, your hand is not gonna hurt it, yeah. Like, like <laughs> clearly, right? Like, obviously, yeah. Like that shit drives me up the wall. Yeah, 
but like yeah i, I mean so what what i i guess the driven point is that there would be a period when a props um no longer mode well when um kind of the era no longer driving the title of props magicians mm. perform right um right. cups and bowl is a classic and lincoln ring is a classic i don't see those get um i don't see those go away anytime soon when you have a good you know historical story yeah good story around it mm. um but yeah probably dancing cam or oh, not dancing can just appearing cans and and some of those props yeah what about I them i feel like they're going away i have you seen a news that um i pop up two years ago where um that appearing can is actually like a weapon and it sells in a title of toy shop well i know people can get That's, hurt yeah yeah but a legit people s- selling it at the kind of a different type of shop and then mm. teaching people how to use appearing can against as like a self defense yes, mechanism yes self yeah i mean yeah like honestly you would you could you could do a little bit of damage with it mm. okay mm. but you, the problem with it is that so for people that don't know what it is it's like the thing is it's been so i've been i've saw ads for it on instagram where it's literally just like completely revealed so i'm i don't even feel bad about it because it's like out there like it's not at this point it's like the method itself is a revelation right it's a it's a revealing that something just pop up so. yeah so it's a cane that like folds into itself and it's got like a little lock right mm. and when you pop it open it just springs up and like opens up into a, into a full mm-hmm. yeah into a full cane right yeah now it's very light and it's spiral it's like a spiral metal kind of like your um like you know the tape measures yes yes it's sort of like a like a wrapped tape measure yeah. and that makes a cane and so if you open that in the direction of someone you're trying to hurt yeah in theory they could hurt them my issue is that it's a one-time thing mm. once it's open you're not doing anything with that shit mm. like i if you have a pairing cane and you're trying to hurt me with it, mm. I will I will not be worried. <laughs> <laughs> like 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 if it's open is what I'm saying. If it's closed, yeah, okay. Until it gets, but once it's open, you're not gonna hit them with the head with it. It's light. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. It's it's a. Uh, I guess you kind of add a little bit of uh, comical situation <laughs> to it. Imagine ping ping just- ping ping <laughs> ping, and the guy's just standing there like, "What are you doing? Can you stop that?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You raise a really interesting point because I read um, people. I think the police says if you if you only have something to protect yourself, you don't want to let go of that object, right? Mm. But when you do a peering can, you literally let go and then use that probably. Mm. Well, I think the way they teach it is kind of throw it. You throw it, right? Mm. The, you kind of like throw it against them. But then that's okay. But if mm. you if you're in a position where you can throw it, mm. you can run too. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. what the fuck are you doing? And it also adds a surprise element. <laughs> 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 Have no, you, yeah, that, yeah. Um. Now you see me. Now, now, now you see me. That movie, yeah, the yeah, first yeah, one. Yeah. They just start throwing the fireball. The fireball. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's like a surprise element. Yeah. Right? Like yeah. I get that, but if you want to do self defense, you gotta you gotta fucking do martial arts, man. Do martial arts. Yes. Fuck this. Mm. Like, yeah. If you have spray or whatever the fuck, like bear spray and that kind of shit. It, I mean, it's not gonna be. You know, it's okay. It's it's, it's useful. Mm. But if you're in a situation, like if you're in a situation where the guy, when you you can get something out mm. and point it at someone and do this, yeah, you could have run a long time ago. Mm. Mm. And like that's a, probably a way better way. Unless you're like elderly, injured, something like that. You know, right. if you're an able body person try to run yeah like fuck around fuck around with that kind of shit you'll find out mm-hmm. someone someone's not gonna like if you don't get them right yeah. you're gonna get worse fucked up you know mm-hmm. what i mean like if you don't spray them like let's say you you miss with the spray mm. and now they're pissed off at you yeah uh, now you now you're really screwed and so like the the whole idea like there's this whole debate in the martial arts where like which martial arts better for self-defense because people go oh you know like like the grappling that's bullshit because in, in a real fight on the street there could be multiple ap- attackers you know like if you take someone down and you're on the ground his friend can come and kick you in the face mm. why the fuck are you fighting three cunts outside mm. like that should mm. never be an option mm. yeah it's your decision to do that why would you do that mm. no right so if if you're ever in a situation where you're at, in a street fight 
and no one's grabbing you, mm. run. Yeah. Right? Like, don't stand there. Fucking run. Mm. And then if if they're grabbing you, now you have to grapple. That's right. the only option you have. You have to get rid of the grip. Yeah. So it's like, you know what I mean? So that's why people say, like, uh, in the jiu-jitsu community, like we say, like, oh, it's a, def- it's a self-defense martial art, like, in theory. Because if you're not being grabbed, like, you don't have to engage. Mm. You can, but you don't have to, you know? Mm. So that's, like, the idea. Yeah. People had a, especially, in, I guess, in my uh, generations or um, people kind of mistreat martial art as a tool of attacking, mm. you know, actively engage with someone. Yeah. But then um, it's only through probably, I only picked this up when I was probably 20 years old and, and then realized that, oh, it's actually the other way around. Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, th- there is the idea of like, you know, the best defense is, an off- is offense, mm. you know, and that's true. Like if, if you're worried about someone, like that someone's going to do some shit, you know, and, and for whatever reason you feel like mm, running might be problematic here. Mm. You striking first as, as much as the law is not like a, with you on that, mm. you striking first is probably the right way. Like you making, you know, making the first move, being aggressive, yeah. overwhelming them with aggression, like in war and everything else. Like that's what people do, right? That's like the, the, th- like the strategy that works best. Mm. But if you're in a scenario where you have the option, mm. you know, then you're just looking for trouble really because yeah. if you can get away then get away you know mm. yeah mm-hmm. um Jocko as a is like a um i believe like a US marine mm. at least was and he he like was like high like high level had a platoon or whatever the fuck i don't know what the terms are mm. and also a jiu jitsu guy um high level black belt um you know he's been like deployed several times he's got like books out all the stuff and he even t- he even talks about it. He's like, yeah, like I'm not gonna. Why the fuck would I fight someone if I don't have to? Mm. Like I'll just run. Like I don't I don't need to prove anything to anyone. Like I'm literally like I mean I don't think he said this, but he's literally like a literal murderer, mm. like a good guy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because yeah. we need those guys. Yeah. But he literally has killed people with his probably with bare hands. If I would have to, you know. Mm. And it's like if that guy's gonna run and he's got no ego about it, then you got no excuse, you know. Because mm. yeah, a lot of it is just ego. It's like you don't want to. You, you want to show that no one can mess with you. It's like, yeah, bro, I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to get get back to training on Monday. Like, I don't I don't want to be fucking injured and shit. Like, that's not that's not fun. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> so um, so tell me what 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 happened with your act? What's going on? What's you can't perform? What what is this? All right. So you you literally said you signed a contract or something, right? Oh right. Yes. All right. So, so let me guess before you before you go into it, I'll let you I'll let you completely. But I'm I'm gonna my best guess. Okay. The Taiwanese government, right? We're like, okay. God damn. God damn, Morris. Morris's matrix is a fucking weapon. It's it's gonna put us into the into the nuclear superpower category, fight against China. And they're like, listen, Morris, you cannot reveal, you cannot show that to anyone else. You're our ace in the ace in the sleeve. And so you're like, yes, okay, I will defeat Putin. I mean, not Putin. Uh, <laughs> I will defeat China with my coins across. Is that what? Is that what happened? Am I accurate? Am I close? You're one percent quite close. <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> no, but um, so yeah, that's a well. It's actually not that interesting story, but uh, I got a lot of free times after COVID, so ah, uh, there's something up there that I can guess. I I guess I can say is. This is what Mr. Beast agree as well. Mm. He said, if you want to get good at something, find a mentor. Mm. Um, it's um, in his recent Joe Rogan podcast. So in my journey of magic, I have a couple of mentors and they're sort of guiding me. And it has nothing to do with Taiwan, but um, it has, well, you know, Armando Lucero? Rings a bell. Yeah. Um, amazing, amazing magicians. And I have come to know his work at around, I guess, 2009, mm. 2010. Um, and he has this legendary coin matrix routines uh, called Coin Menagerie. Okay. And uh, when I look up his work, and because um, I only heard his name and people kind of briefly talk about it, is uh, one of the most amazing coin metrics um, you have ever seen. And he spent probably 20 or 30 your entire life developing it. Damn. And when I look at, when I look up, um, and then that's when, that that's where the internet was just, you know, start 
kind of booming and there isn't much information up there. So after COVID and I got a free time, a few free times. So I took the pump. So yeah, I took the chance. Attend his workshop. Where was it online or online? Okay. Yeah. Well, he used to do only in Las Vegas. You have so you have to fly to Las mm. Vegas and then attend his workshop. Um, but then he realized that he can probably make a lot more money if he did it online. <laughs> probably. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't. Yeah. yeah, I actually wouldn't know his um, kind of method um, of engaging with the students. But uh, he has coupled of uh, Paul V Hill. He stu- um, took his lessons. Um, oh, okay. And Ben Simon. Oh yeah. Yeah, took his lessons and a couple other guy and if um, don't know that guy. Right. So, and whoever took his lesson always come up with um, they somehow becoming a philosopher, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but then no. So, in order to take his workshop, the first thing you kind of pay the money, mm-hmm. and the first thing he gave you is a contract. Mm. And then the contract says, you're not allowed to perform this under any circumstances when there is a recording available. Mm. Right. Um, and so that means you cannot do that um, in any public platform. Right. And you cannot disclose the methods, um, methods or technique when you jam with jamming with um, uh, magicians. So I read the clause um, bit by bit and... Um, I signed a contract with him and my metrics routine that I did, I'll say it's most of his technique, mm. but then I changed the formations and I developed my own sequence. Right. It. So, okay. um, and that's why it, if um, this place is being, you know, if the podcast is recorded and I cannot perform any things that remotely relate to, to his technique. Mm-hmm. But then the good thing is um, I develop some of my own thing, which probably doesn't look like um, what Amanda has stuff. shown. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is you cannot find his routine online because right. it's such a secret, um, such a secrecy that no one's just want to talk about. You know, like you, asleep, you attend the workshop, uh, but then people just don't want to reveal it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, wow, it's that good. So that's the story of the um, that thing I told. Yeah, I share with you about about the contract. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. I, I didn't. How do you so, find that it changed? Like, if you if you if you could take a snapshot of before you before this this workshop and then you afterwards, like what would be like the key differences you see in your own style of magic or what whatever it influenced. It's a good question. Um, I think at this point in time, I'm emphasis more. Em- I put more emphasis on the technique, mm. especially for something magic four, right? That's why I say in the beginnings, I feel like my performance is well. Actually, the technique, everything is ov- is outweighed by my performance. So that's a magician cannot, you know, the ability of the performance is so low that you create this imbalance you're saying like it's a bottleneck like well your perf- is that what you mean like your performance is the, like perfor- the, the magic can only be as good as the performance is that what you're saying or no well i feel like audience can tell if, right you know you spend it's like you you spend thousand or well, thousand hours perfecting um a double lift but then if you don't have a good, I guess, performance ability, then audience can sense it. Like it's like, yeah, this performance is boring, but then his technique is perfect. Right, right, right. Like he did something flaw- flawlessly, but then who is this guy? Mm, mm. Right, and then that's kind of the. You're not telling your story through yeah, whatever you're doing, or, or whatever the story you're telling is not g- genuine mm. enough, and then yeah, so like. The metrics routine was, I feel like is um, near, or well, it's quite um, <laughs> uh, egotistic to say that, but then I feel like I did my job, mm-hmm. the coin metrics, um, but then- it's Near perfect is what you're going to say. Yeah, I got I'll, but then I'll take it. The monologue at the beginning of my routines, like right. that one just requires a lot of work, right? And so, so do you think that after that 
seminar thing, your technique was like, is that what you attribute your perfect technique to? Or? For now, yeah, just oh, okay. the technique. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And understanding of humans and body language, I would mm. say. Um, because when magicians do magic, they put focuses on what's beyond the wrist, um, wrist, mm -hmm. wrist, yes. And they never really look at their feet. Um, it's something that kind of learns my feet is always it's kind of um, it's part of the principle and I broadcasting it to um, to the world but <laughs> no um, the f that lower body is important for right. the coin metrics routine that I'm um, demonstrating in something magic so yes so that's like kind of so just looking whole. looking at body language and body uh what you're communicating through your posture. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A as it relates to the magic you're doing. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. So like the technique and, but then, you know, performance need a lot of work. Mm. Um, interesting. Mm. That's that's an interesting idea because like, yeah, you know, I mean. Is that, rem remember the um, dev, he originally wanted to do um, the, the flying, floating? floating cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah floating yeah. cup. Yeah. And then I think you're the, or Ellen's, or maybe you mentioned about the feet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of similar. Yeah, it's idea. it's it's the idea oh. of like um, I can't take this with me. Like when you're doing contact juggling, right? Yeah. You can do it like this. So you can go like this. Or. Right, you can incorporate your whole body, and right. that that adds a, a illusion of you having to struggle with the yeah the isolation, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that, that that's same idea with like the the zombie or the mm. floating floating wine glass that the devil's trying to do. Yeah, and it's such a difficult act because it's a silence, so you're inviting audience to examine everything, right? So mm. that pretty much means that every part of your body, your movement, your posture has to, in one way or another, misdirect audience. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes exercising that metrics routine so worthwhile. Mm. Yeah, because um, you're, I guess when you look at, look back in the, re, um, or if I look back, if there is a recording available, I'll probably, people probably will tell, oh, I'm just focusing my own stuff. Mm -hmm. But then, and actually kind of observing the audience mm. downstage. So every movement that I make mm. is kind of, you know, this audience look at this hand, this audience look at that hand. It's kind of all incorporate. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Cause um, like, you know, in, uh, in martial arts, again, you have to keep going back to this, but like, let's say, let's take boxing, right? Mm. Everyone talks about like footwork, 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 footwork. And like, until you actually box for a while like I, I mean, i'm not I, I don't i don't have a lot of experience boxing but like i have teammates who fight in mma and stuff and cage fight and stuff um until you have experience boxing it doesn't make any sense it's like you're, you're throwing punches what the fuck's the point like what are you talking about footwork footwork right we're not playing football yeah you know what i mean but then you realize that to generate any sort of power mm. everything has to start at the floor yeah so you know when you're when you're if you throw a punch if i throw a punch like this this is the amount of punch i can generate through this arm is minimal mm. as soon as i throw my my shoulder and my body into it now it's more if i'm pushing from the ground yeah extending my hand so by the time it hits the contact my hands already in position and my body's driving through mm. all of a sudden now that's going to be much more powerful yeah you know so obviously in martial arts the the goal is to generate the most amount of power the most amount of leverage mm. so so all these things are very apparent because you can tell oh that didn't hurt why didn't that hurt yeah because you can see his footwork was trash yeah but in magic you don't really have that feedback because a matrix by itself will just just like this is going to fool most people mm. and so you're not going to get that negative feedback of like why why didn't that knock him out mm. why didn't that hurt him why right. didn't that choke him yeah. you know you don't, you don't have that feedback. So it's it's very, it takes someone that's been doing it for 40 years, 50 years, whatever, yeah. 
yeah. that has all these little incremental improvements mm. that can be like, oh yeah, actually, you know, the way you set your feet here yeah. makes this look different. And go back to kind of like go back to the beginning. You need his tweak over the past twenty or thirty years. Always receive the feedback is always received from the spectator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, you yeah. need the spectators' yeah. feedback in order to get those incremental improvement. Mm, mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I gave someone this example before, but um, you know, like if uh, if I go, okay, you're gonna find your own card, okay? Mm. So um, just tell me stop. Stop. Yeah, that's the card. Yep. Yeah. So you're gonna find it. Okay. So cool. find, yep. So I'm gonna show you the cards like this, and you're just gonna memorize the exact position of your card in the deck, right? Like it's okay. exactly you're gonna you get subconsciously you know exactly where that card is at all times. Mm. At all fucking times, right? Um it's just a subconscious thing. It's psychology, it's uh you know, it's very intellectual <laughs> stuff. But <laughs> but uh you, you just whenever you feel like it, don't don't yell it out because that will well, actually yell it out because there's no other way to communicate. But uh, whenever you feel like it, don't let me influence you. You just say stop whenever you want. Stop. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Look, if you win this one, that would be different. If you win this one, that would be different. Um, what was, your card was the, I think I saw it. I think it was the five of spades, right? Five of clubs. Clubs. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> right? So that yeah. little bit where I get it wrong, Right, yeah. Right? Um, yeah, I, I just realized I wasn't supposed to not see the card. I should have saw it at the beginning, but it makes sense. You know what I'm saying? The yeah. part where I, I get it slightly wrong mm. and then I and then they get it right, it's like, it's really strong because it sort of eliminates the possibility that I mm. did something. Because mm. it's like, but he got it wrong though. Mm. So it must have not been him because if it was him, he would have got it wrong yeah. and I got it right. Yeah, you know, it's like a tiny little tweak. It's not. It's nothing crazy. It's just mm. saying spades instead of clubs. Mm. But like, I found that this makes the like the same effect. Yeah, like twice as strong. Like the f the reactions are like measurably stronger for yes. me. Yes. When I perform this. Yeah. And so this little tweak, like you tell this to a magician, like ah, whatever. Yeah. But then you actually try it, and you try both versions, and you try them side by side, and you try them hundreds of times. Yeah. And you realize, oh wait a minute, mm. like. You know, seventy times out of th out of a hundred, mm. it was stronger when I did it this way. Yes, you know what I mean. And th that works for me, by the way. Like, yeah, for for whoever that's thinking I'm faking the reactions, but <laughs> I feel like that one definitely at because I I can imagine like you can just reveal it it's like oh a uh, fight of clubs right and then yeah you know what but it's fight of clubs but then <clears> if you say fight of space because my emotion right now is still hinged on yeah what could it. What what if it actually goes wrong, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sam so. Samuel did that one, you know, with the one with the chaos. Yes, he, I genuinely <laughs> thought he was gonna get it wrong. I'm like, there's no fucking way. I still don't know how he did. I'm I'm still annoyed, but I gen like it felt so chaotic mm. that I genuinely felt like he's not gonna get this, and I was worried. I'm like, do we need to redo this fucking like? Do we need to redo the trick? To get another take? Am I gonna have to edit this out? Fuck me, <laughs> you know, like all this stuff was going through my head, and then he gets it right, and I was like, holy shit! So like the 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 tension mm. was built 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 in my own head because i felt like it really could go wrong right and then boom the release yeah you know yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. and so anytime you can do that like mm. without making it seem like i've talked to brendan dooley about this oh yeah and he has a thing of like listen like i'm i'm a professional i get paid the big bucks mm. i'm not going to get anything wrong right like that's okay. that's not going to happen and i'm like that's cool mm. but i'm my character is like I'm I'm tricky. I'm a mm. I'm cheeky, you know? Yeah. Like like once I don't mind if they realize that I was joking mm. about the about the five of spades. Mm. I don't mind if they realize, oh you bastard, you got me with that one. I don't mind that. Mm. You know what I mean? As long as it gets the like I can build it up. Yeah. You know, sometimes I'll I'll do um kind of like just tr just cheeky shit, you know, like uh mm. I'm trying to think of an example. What's a good example? Right, like a like a, do I have a double backer? I don't. But basically, um, yeah, I, I, you have you know what a double backer is. Um, someone that doesn't. Do you have one? I do. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, it's it's not really that important, but yeah, it's um, and oh, I'm, I'm quite interested to see what you um, where is this? Oh no, I don't. Okay, all right. <laughs> I think I have one. Let me try and think. Which deck would have that? Uh. uh anyway, it's not that big of a deal. Mm. Uh. Basically, a double backer is a, a card that's um, 
Oh no, there's definitely a Has double, a double back. back. Could it be the one that? Oh yeah. Well, it's a double back, but the wrong type. We use the, we'll use this for example because uh, it still makes sense. So, all right, you know the 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 King Arthur story with the with the, with the sword. sword. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, this is like that. Like, it's impossible to turn it over. Mm. Yeah. You want to try? Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So then yeah. it's, it's like, oh, all right. Okay. You know, but I, I play, I, I be, I'm super serious. Mm. I'm like, you know, uh, like I build it up as much as I can, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm like, look, you know, I, I might even do like, I, I'll turn it over, but then I put it down, you know. Yeah. And then they do it and they're like, oh, you bastard, you know. And then it's like, but look, if you like... It's it's like really it's not it's not possible to turn it over but mm. but you're not King Arthur right right like if if we were King Arthur yeah we would just like be able to turn it over any time <laughs> you know what I mean yeah lucky he was a king too yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but you know what I mean so um, yeah I don't have I don't have any issues be, with playing around with like failing and then mm. getting it right and mm. stuff like that mm. as long as they realize that that was probably meant to happen all along and and at the end uh, as long as audience don't you don't make audience feel stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, but I just mean like, like I, you know, his point was that people will think that you're not professional. Mm. People like, why am I paying you? Let's let's make a stupid number twenty thousand dollars for this gig, mm. and you're getting shit wrong. Right. 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 But I think most audience members realize mm. when something goes wrong and then it goes right, mm. like extra right. You, they realize, oh, okay. I see where he's coming from, but I mean, um, his argument is. I mean, he's talking to probably a perspective where if there is a someone who's paying him, mm. watching him perform, he, yeah. he was supposed to get it right. Mm. But then if that person walk away or like he, he gone into a toilet, he'll probably, he can probably also do that as well. Right, right? but, but he, yeah. I, I like that's what I'm saying is that but, people that hire me, mm. I'll do this sort of stuff. Mm. Cause I feel like they know that I'm not really fucking up. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? Because yeah. it's, it's, it's built into the routine. Yeah. So I feel like it's fine, you know. Yeah. But like, I I also get that idea. Like, he's he's probably one of the most successful um, mm. corporate magicians in New Zealand. So who am I? Like, you know, it's <laughs> working for him. I mean, shit. I don't I don't have like I can't say that it's not working. Mm. Um, but I just feel like for me, I don't mind doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 He's an amazing guy. With like, I think his act is definitely. I have not seen many good performers um, in New Zealand actually, <laughs> but, but he's one is definitely up there. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's entertaining. Yeah. It's I mean, mm. even the stuff that was like experimental was like amazing. You know. Oh yeah. Like 100%. the whole memory shit, bro. I'm I'm fucked with memory. As soon as I like, I have to change a <laughs> phone number, I'm like, oh man. Yeah. I'm, it's gonna be like three months of people going, "What's your phone number?" I'm like, oh, let me get it out. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. 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 A good so. thing uh, you and Sam was talking about, but memorize that. Yeah, yeah. Actually, like, or in my. Times in military in around 2006. Wait, you did military? Yeah, in Taiwan. Sheesh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but this I, guy's a trained killer right here, man. And I'm out here talking <laughs> about martial arts. Like you can beat my ass in a second. No, most of the time in army, I was kind of just train, training myself to do, to memorize two um, stack. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you got nothing else to right, do. Right, you're right. staring at a wall or the sky. You're like yeah, you just holding a gun, kind of like standing. You know, you guard at the gate, mm -hmm. and then pretty much got nothing else to do except memorize um, a stack. So that's what I did. <laughs> well, yeah. I, don't I don't think that's the only option because I'm pretty sure there's a lot of Taiwanese uh, um, army people that don't have memorized stacks. So. <laughs> All right, that's true. <laughs> I think there are other options as well. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, but, but yeah, it's like, again, for me, magic is just ever changing and ever evolving. Like this time I might interest be interested in metrics, um, but maybe... Tomorrow I'll go back to memorize the stack or um, yeah, it just keep evolving, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. While we're on the topic, do you want to show the two phases, a couple phases that you can show? Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, Why not? sweet. Let's um, switch seats. Yeah, so it's a routine inspired heavily um, by Amanda Lucero as well as uh, Monster Sun from Japan. And I actually show this one in um, Something Magic uh, for as part of my second phase.
<laughs> That's so cool. Well, and um, I haven't actually show uh, anyone about the, this is new face that kind of developed, but then it's also inspired by Shudagawa. Oh my god, dude. What? What the fuck? Where did that one go? Where did that one go, dude? Oh, dude, that was fucking nuts. Thank you. So when, when, the, the, was that second part in the show? Yes, the second it was. one okay. was in the okay, show. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. then the, um, the one that I just did, the last one was yeah. kind of remove, remove it from... Um, something magic, yeah. Because mm. I, yeah, just didn't feel there's a place for it, right? Um, but then it's part of kind of the process that I develop. So yeah, yeah. Cause just taking bits and pieces from other magicians, but then, um, yeah. Um, but I just, you know, I just call it my call it my own. <laughs> right, right. Well, that's what it is, man. There's nothing new under the sun, right? So yeah, exactly. Ultimately, yeah. it's all just remixes of other shit. Yeah, and yeah. the more you read, the more you realize that. Um, I sort of already give up creating because everything it's else already, is already yeah, up there. Yeah. And it's only by injecting your personality in yeah. it that you create something new. Well, that deck yeah. switch that I that I used, right? Mm. I don't I didn't read it anywhere. I didn't I like I don't know if that's how people do it. Right. I don't know what other people do. Yeah. I have a book by uh I think it's Roberto Giobi, I think it is. The I deck switch that, one. Yeah. The art of switching deck. Yeah, is that Roberto? Yep. Yep, cool. I got that book. I read some of it, mm. but I didn't see that thing in there. Like I don't I, maybe it's I, I didn't finish it, so I don't know, maybe mm. it's in there, but mm. point is like as far as I'm aware, I created it, mm. but I'm 99 to no, I'm 100 and fucking 10% sure mm. that it's been done before and it's not my creation. Mm. Like you know what I mean? It's that feeling of like like yeah, okay, I created it, but there's no chance it's original. Zero. But I feel like there is something about, that's something interesting about the way you create for that particular pieces, right? For me, uncreating it based on the existing methods, mm. but then you're creating it because of the need of creating, mm -hmm. which is from zero to one. Yep. Whereas my one is pretty much, there is a phone out there. And then right. you're just changing from one to two, kind of one I mean, to I, three. I did that with the infinity change. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so that's like the the um, creations of the existing routine, but then you know you just modify it. But then with your deck switch, I feel like there is a sense of genuine creations, uh, like from zero, because you don't know what method you're gonna use. You just come up with something on the spot. Right. That's from zero to one. That's really interesting. I mean, me. I guess it's ju literally just like, oh, I need to do this. Mm when can it ha can it be done yeah here's a real like here's a motivated like point in time in the routine mm. that it could be done yeah okay let me make something that accomplishes that mm. like i don't i almost don't even feel like like you know how like sometimes you sit down and you're like oh i have this idea what the fuck can i do with it like what if i do this what if i do this? it's like not even like there was none of that it was just like mm. oh like i could do it when that happens. Mm. Okay, let me make the thing. Yeah. Like there wasn't even like a like a deliberation of like how should I make <laughs> it? I just made it, tested it, it worked. Cool. Mm. Yeah. Like but that's there that's was no drafts, there was no like writing it down, like thinking about it, twinkering, like I But you managed to kind of create in your own way the best um deck switch method that's kind of assuming it's already out there. Mm, right. Mm, mm. Yeah. But that's fulfilling your needs and yeah i mean it, it would be amazing if it wasn't out there because i would <laughs> fucking produce it and sell a bunch of them yeah but i'm so not confident that that's the case <laughs> yeah probably if you start reading it from that book cover to cover you yeah. probably found it <laughs> well actually what happened was i read that book and in it was recommending a a pre-existing switching device mm. method mm. and i bought it Oh, okay. And it sucks. Like a cooler. So bad. Yeah. So bad. Like I, I have never, Pure Smoke was a bad product. Right, right, yeah. But this was 
not even usable. <laughs> like pure smoke, it was just bad because it kept breaking. Mm. Pure smoke, well, I don't want to reveal it, but it was just a bad magic product. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, I, I had three different ones. They kept sending me new ones because they kept breaking. And I, by the third one, I, I gave up. Like right. they would st keep sending me them. I was like, I don't fucking care anymore, bro. Yeah. But anyway, this was like not even usable. Mm. Like, like don't talk about like, is, is it going to fly? Are the spectators going to get it? Is it? None of that. It's just like, you couldn't even do the move. Right. Like okay. it just didn't work. I'm interested to see what props that is. <laughs> I don't even know if, I think I know where it is, but mm. I might even be missing pieces because I just fucking threw it in the box. But then you bought it based on the recommendation. From yeah, the, in that okay. book. Right. And I'm like, okay, so that's scrapped. I'm completely going to abandon the idea that I can just openly switch a deck on the table. Right. That was like, because that was the idea initially. I'm like, wh why do I need to do it in like in front of everyone? Mm. What if I just did it, uh, you know, in an offbeat, that's very easy. Mm. So I just did that. Yeah. That was my thought process. Like it wasn't even, yeah. But yeah, for me, it's a quite a genuine, you know, creations from zero to one. I would say that's, kind of beyond a comprehension because you get different weight of because when you and Sam talking about creating creativity right it's based on the existing move and mm. um and for me it's like a stage magic people just change props you know like you for example force manipulations and nowadays people use candle uh, mm -mm -mm. and people do use some type of other props for me that's not bring that more in line for me that's probably not um you know i i don't look down on it it's just like where is the creativity like where is it um but then equally i'm also quite pessimistic because when i read magic books everything is already out there so i don't intend to create anything because i know it's um already everything it's already you know published i think that's why what drives me reading more magic books mm. um yeah but. yeah i've given up trying to impress magicians mm. Mm. <laughs> well when when you start to like when you take the ap approach that i did mm. which is like i'm just gonna kill my ego completely when yeah. it comes to magic mm. there's no I, if i don't have an ego and i see myself as the white belt in the room mm. how can the white belt impress the black belts mm. they can't right so with that mentality, there's nothing to impress. Mm. There's I, I, you know, I see everyone better than me, so there's no point in impressing anyone. Mm. So I just I'm kind of selfish in that way. I just look to be like, let me learn from you, mm. you know. So it's in a way it's a selfish endeavor in some ways, but in other ways it's it's freeing because it then I don't feel like I need to, like previously I'd be like I want to come up with something to show magicians and they can accept me as like oh yes he's creative. You know, whereas now it's like, no, is it going to serve the trick or not? Mm. If there's an existing method, I'll use that fucking why, why reinvent the wheel? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, um, I feel like, like the, the approach that I've taken recently with this e kind of like the, the no ego. Mm. And of course, you know, I say this now and it's going to bite me in the ass when someone critiques me and I'm like, you fucking dickhead, you know, but, <laughs> uh, you know, but I try to, like, it's just my, what I'm aspiring. I I'm finding myself enjoy magic more with mm. this mindset. Yeah. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Because before it's like, if I go to like an IBM, I'm like kind of like on edge, mm. like not okay, IBM, whatever, magic meeting. Mm. I'm kind of on edge. Like oh, I need to, yeah. I need to like make sure that people know I belong. Yes. Like this imposter syndrome. Yep. And it's like. It happen all the time with magicians. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, if I'm the worst guy in the room, what imposter, like what's the imposter syndrome? Mm. It's like, well, kick me out if you think I'm not good enough. I don't give a fuck, you know? Right. Yeah. Like that's, you know. So I, I just found it for myself. Like it was very useful. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Like I, um, I guess you can say there is also a danger of over creating. Like you, you kind of when you creating a lot of stuff of your own, you would like you said you will want to do every single thing that's your of your own creations. But then you just you in in a sense you block yourself from what's out there. Mm. The better methods the just just overall better quality stuff yep right there's also a sense of that kind of dangers um but yeah i think that mentality is just not healthy mm. and sometimes i think 
when I first time meet a magician, I still might have that mentality, but then equally, it's not like I jam with other magicians a lot. Um, but it's all go back to the in, internal world. Mm. If you're the way you speak or if your movement or if anything else outside of magic is rich enough, people can feel it. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't even have to show your magic, right? Mm. You just sit down. Uh, you can see all those masters, David Williamson's or um, Juan Tamariz and every, every of those masters out there. Um, there is just the sense of um, aura around mm. them, mm. right? That's developed through their internal world. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I mean, I don't know. Like, I feel like there's a lot of ego and magic, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think part of that is, uh, I, you know, it's there's no... There's no mechanism by which there's no pecking order. There's no mechanism by which we know mm. with, beyond the shadow of a doubt who's the best. Mm. Like, again, I spend an equal amount, probably more, with with martial artists time with martial artists than I do with with, with mag magicians. Mm. So in in martial arts, it's like obviously you you don't know like. Ultimately, you're not you're not in a competition, mm. right? You're training, so you're you're trying to do your best to improve. Right. But by training with each other, and sometimes you you'd have competition days, in which case you're going 100 percent and you're trying your best and you try to win. You know exactly who can beat you and who you can beat. Mm. Like you know, like you all know in the room, you all know where you stand. Mm. And there's this there's this like an invisible kind of battle mm. for the placement in that position in that in that hierarchy right? right but it's all friendly and we're all trying to improve but all the same time like we're all trying to get to the top mm. like that's just how it goes right yeah. and so there's no there's no need to like have these like underhanded compliments underhanded insults mm. uh, I, I you know i don't think your moves that great but you don't you don't want to tell them so you give them like a little mm. backhanded compliment you know like all that kind of shit like there's no need for that cuz we go on the mat and we we try it out and we see what the fuck the deal is. And if you catch me with that armbar, that means the armbar works. And I mm. know it works. And I know that I need to go home and look up a de defense for it. Mm. Like simple, like it's just binary. It's like it either works or it doesn't. Right. Yeah. Whereas in magic, especially with magicians, with no audiences in the room, mm. who the fuck knows what's going on? Mm. Like we're performing for each other. So already it's such a removed... Mm. It's a, such a removed uh, environment. Like yeah. it's not a real performing environment. Yeah, this, you know. Yeah, there, there's this fun story I heard from um, Darwin Ortiz mm. and the author of Strong Magic. It talks about like it, this part didn't. I, think I really, have a book from him. Do you somewhere. have one somewhere? Strong Magic or uh, Designing Miracles? No, that's not that's not Darwin Ortiz. That's um. But you know who he is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So there's this fun story where he met a magician in a convention. And this magician start talking about, oh, uh, look at my ambitious car routine. Like I got the, these double lift down and then and look at me, the different way of flipping it and um, um, well, put it back and then doing different tilt maneuvers, everything else. And he just, this guy had such a, um, uh, just vi just energy mm. around whatever he's creating, mm. right? And then Darwin Ortiz look at it and says, oh, that table over there, there's a, no um, layman mm. go and perform mm. yeah like it's it's no like he, he didn't really challenge yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that one and you just say just give a, a minor friendly suggestion mm -hmm, it's like mm -hmm. yeah whatever you say over there do it mm -hmm. with that spectators and then gosh that guy just completely butchers the routine <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah it's like nothing right about the way that he did ambitious car and right. you can just tell the spectator is busy um, um maybe they're talking about like what movie to watch next they never really pay attention to this guy yeah right and this guy came back and um darwin uh, darwin look at him and trying to comfort him right but then before darwin even say a thing the guy was like damn that was good mm. that guy was like oh my gosh, I did a perfect job. Right. Right, right. So right. he thought that he was doing like a really good job. Yeah, he thought he was doing a perfect job where um, where Darwin was about to say, yeah, you did it. Um, you, you need to improve this, improve that. But he look at this guy's attitudes and look at this guy's, um, just the way he kind of, you know, 
look, yeah, en- enlarge himself, and mm. he's just like, you know what, I give up. There's there's like the ego aspect, and there's the lack of self awareness. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah, when yeah. you don't even notice that people aren't interested. Yeah, you know, like that actually gave <laughs> doing magic and in, in bars and stuff mm. gave me a hyper awareness for when people are like bored. Yeah, you know, because yeah. I'll be in a conversation. Yeah, and then I notice someone's eyes drift and i'm like mm. oh shit i'm boring as fuck right now mm. you know like mm. you, you know yeah. so i i'm like oh crap but a lot of most people they don't know that like they don't they don't focus on mm. being entertaining they don't focus on you know they're just like like ah oh, my car and my car payments you know i'm telling you i went home and there were there were there was not in the mailbox right. and then i looked in the mailbox and there wasn't and then i went i went and i like went all the way to the insurance company and i told him i told him <laughs> if you don't send me the and you're like bro this is the dumbest story i've ever heard in my life yeah. but there's just no self-awareness there you know what i mean yeah. they'll just harp on about some bullshit but like you know and then like I can't. I imagine that's even one step removed from like comedians, mm. where they don't even have a prop. Yeah. You don't have something to fall back on. Yeah. You know, like you you must be so hyper aware because it's just what your vocal content is. Yeah. There's nothing else to fall back on. So what, uh, I think that's why comedians sort of hate magicians because like, <laughs> they were like, oh, we don't have props. You got props. <laughs> it, it, like, it's harder in the sense that, I mean, I, yeah, like, I want to go do comedy. Mm. But I'm scared that I'm just gonna have a deck of cards in my hand, in my in my pocket, and if a fail, if a joke fails, I'm just gonna go. Here's an ace of spades, you know. Like I'm just gonna like try to just hide behind the tricks, cause fuck that, man, that's scary. Yeah, I think that in and of itself is really funny. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I could make it a bit where like every time a joke fa- fucks up, I do a trick. Yeah, and it's like kind of the way it's to yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah. But nah, man, I, I, I yeah, I, I, I've been saying for a while that I'm like, I kind of want to do stand up, but I'm scared, mm. but I should just fucking, I should just fucking man up. I don't know. I feel like you're natural material to do it. Yeah. But I, I don't know if you don't see it yourself or Emmy saw it, but yeah, like this guy is actually quite, you know. Oh, I appreciate it. <laughs> I mean, that first show that definitely didn't show it. <laughs> Well, yeah. Well, because you hide behind the props, remove that no, props and but, see what but happens. But I, I had yeah. in, in in the first show, like, because I had a bunch of um a, b- a bunch of written jokes That's right. at, at different points. Yeah, and I I, I like went through them, mm. like, and I'm like, like, oh, that didn't hit. Next one, oh, that didn't hit. Next one, oh, that didn't hit. What the fuck? You know, and just uh, yeah, it was just the like, I mean, not wasn't just the audience, mm. but definitely that front row was rough because yeah. of the reasons we talked about. Yeah. Um, and then in the second jo- show, I completely forgot my opener, which had most of the jokes yeah. and people still laughed. So it was a weird one. It was a strange fucking, yeah. 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 Um, well, for those who don't know, I guess, uh, <laughs> uh, Edward is so enjoying the, his performance on the second one and he forgot the entire segment <laughs> of mentalism act completely. Yeah, like I literally went up there. There was supposed to be like a three to four minute act, like of opener, yeah. which, which to be honest, wasn't a great opener, but... That's beside the point, yeah. um, and uh, and then I would go into my next two act, my next two like uh, sections, mm. and uh, yeah, I literally just skipped the first part. I just I was just in the zone. I got a select, I got a, per- a person select in the crowd, and I just went straight into my 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 second trick. Like I didn't even think. Yeah. 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 Which is annoying because I really wanted to try out those jokes, mm. but anyways. Yeah. That's yeah. That's just what, how it goes. But it tell. It- it kind of reveals how you know the second one. We really do enjoy um, the second performance more mm. than the first one. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And but but that that I've I've realized that a long time ago. The in, the the ex, the performance experience mm. is in no way in, like indicative of the audience's experience, mm. and I've I've noticed that a long time. During the years of doing gigs. Um, those years that I did the gigs and then COVID happened, mm. I realized that whenever a trick wouldn't go a hundred percent my way, mm. it was back to that guilt. But, but in this case, it wasn't about the lying, right? Which is what we talked about. It was more about the fact that I didn't feel it was perfect. I didn't feel like it was my best right. performance. And I would start having these qualifying statements to the audience. These, mm. these, uh, these almost apologetic, like, oh, you know, you should have seen it yesterday. Uh, that was really good. Mm. Oh, usually it's better than that. Like st- small little things. Mm. And I k- started catching myself yeah. 
and realizing that the audience does not give a fuck how that trick went yesterday. Mm. They just saw it today. That's the only experience. That's the only point of reference to have. Yeah. So they have nothing to compare it to. Mm. You have like hundreds and thousands of performances yeah. to compare it to. You have so many reference points yes. that to you, it's like, oh yeah, that wasn't even in the top 10% of mm. my, but yeah, but like that's still amazing to someone that's never seen it. Mm. Like the, the, the mismatch of, of experience, like, uh, of, uh, you know, of the experience mm. from a performance point of view to a uh, spectator's point of view is huge. Mm. And so I realized that there's, people don't care about my excuses. Right. People don't care about, people don't care about me in general. Mm. Like no one gives a fuck about me as a human. Mm. Like if I was a homeless guy on the street, people wouldn't look at me twice. Mm. So keeping that in mind, I've completely stopped apologizing for mistakes. Mm. I completely stopped, you know what I mean? Like there's, I don't need to qualify myself. Right. This is what happened. Yeah. This is the this is the experience we just shared. Mm. Take it or leave it. Mm. That's it. That's the you know. Um, so that attitude, I think, is what sort of had me going. And that yeah. like that first like show was like, oh, it was all right. It wasn't bad. You know, mm. like it could have been better, but that's fine. Uh, yeah. There's no need to like, yeah. I really like that thought because like I feel like magicians tend to kind of forget this responsibility we have where our job is literally erase that impossibility. Like what I mean by that is when we do something impossible, it becomes possible. Right. Right. And audience is the person who's viewing it. And what you're doing to the spectator is to, you know, like the second time they saw it, it's no longer magic. Mm. Right. The first time I saw it, this is impossible. Um, but then it, because magician did it, so it became possible. Right. right. And when you, like you said, when you were describing that, oh, this is the mistake and the, the comparison that you made with the magician himself, mm -hmm. audience, the live spectators is the first, yeah, they had the first hand experience. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes our performance to the spectators such an important, you know, experience to then mm. yeah yeah so, yeah i mean i'm trying to work on that like yeah i still do it though i it's it's yeah, still an impulse it's, um, it's still an impulse like mm. like with the whole thing of like oh fuck i forgot an act mm. i started saying it without even realizing i'm like wait a minute i shouldn't <laughs> even be saying this mm. like that was the act yeah you know what i mean like what happened in that second show was the act that people saw and mm. that's the only act that people should care about yep but I still, in my head, I was like, oh, I forgot, but I was so like dumbstruck by the fact that I forgot a whole act, mm. I forgot a whole opener, yeah. that I was like talking about it, you know? <laughs> so I still do it. Like it's it's an impulse that's so hard to ignore because yeah. from your point of view, like you're really, f you know, focused on the things that you need to improve or the things that you need to be changing or the things that you need to, mm. you know? But ultimately the only thing that happened is the, is the only thing that happened, you know? Yeah. Um, like... I mean, this is kind of going off the off the via, off the via path, but in a way, like when when like people at, at training and stuff, like they go to tournaments and they lose. Mm. In a way, I'm kind of like happier for them mm. that they lost than if they won. In a in a weird way, because mm -hmm. I've never improved more than coming off a loss. Yeah, like really, ever. Yeah. Mm. Like, because you're just you you wake up thinking about getting fucking choked, mm. and you're like fuck, and then you like you go to training. And you see that position again and you're like, never again. Like mm -hmm. I'm going to, if I have to, if I have to sit in this position and keep going back to it and mm -hmm. keep doing it for the next six months until it never happens again to me, I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like, you just like, you know, it's like such an emotionally charged moment. Oh yeah. Once, if you win, if you win a tournament, I, I've like, I've not looked at my matches that I won. Like I've, I've not analyzed them. I've not like gone back and be like, how could I improve? I fucking won the tournament. Who gives a shit? Right. You know? And so, in some weird way, like the the although those things that happen that are bad <clears throat> are frustrating, and you want to like, you know, they can be some of the best growth moments. Mm, mm. You know, yeah, like and like I'm sure that I, it's very unlikely that I'm gonna forget a fucking act again. <laughs> it's very <laughs> unlikely, and if yeah. I do, then I don't know. But mm. but it's unlikely because it's never happened before, and I'm goddamn sure it's not going to happen again. Oh yeah. So you know. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a extreme end of spectrums, right? You can either be 
so devastated the lost that you can never recover or you can be somewhere in the middle and well let's go to the other extreme is you know like the case of that Darwin Ortiz magicians um well the ma- ma- Darwin Ortiz friends right yeah you can be completely just does not have self-awareness and mm-hmm. then think that you did a kick-ass job yeah um and as long as I feel like if you know there's a room for improvement, like I, when I look back on my uh, previous performance, uh, there's so much thing that I can improve on that I will not make that same mistake again. Right. Right. And that's go back to the things that we said. Um, go back to the things that you just described that you will never forget, you know, your act the next time. Um, and as long as I kind of aware there is an improvement that can be made. Yeah. 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 That's what I make people say a bunch of things about failures um but yeah i'll say you know do not afraid to get to fail yeah yep. yeah such but a that, key thing. that's the thing man like you know when you're when you're when you're stuck on this identity of like the magician mm-hmm. and this may be why this might be why you don't want to label yourself as that mm-hmm. but when you're stuck on that identity you see a failure as an ins or like a, as a attack on that identity, mm-hmm. right? Whereas, in my perspective, it's like the magician doesn't have to be always right. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it sometimes people know how it's done. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Yeah. Like you know, doing TikToks and stuff, it, <laughs> cunts are fucking discussing the method in the comments. Yeah. It is what it is. You know. Yeah. If if people want to figure it out, they they'll find a way to figure it out. Like there's fucking information's all out there. There's books available. Yeah. I mean. You know, I'm not like I'm not literally pretending to be a fucking like, you know, medium or some mm. sort of uh, some sort of superpower. You know, I don't have a super a real superpower. It's a mm. fucking it's an art form, mm. and so you figure it out. Cool. You appreciate you appreciate it for what it is. If you don't figure it out, cool. Enjoy it for the magic. You know, that's enjoy it. The process. That's it. You know. Yeah. 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 Cool, man. What are you working on? Anything with cards? With cards, yeah. um, like it, recently, or was it was it mostly the Matrix you've been? Well, I don't want to ever see Matrix ever again. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> it's a. I would say it's um, almost ten months of drilling on one. Really? Yeah, yeah. So including you know the workshop. When that when I did hold. you do the the seminar thing? The workshop with yeah. Armando. Yeah. Uh, it's. I believe uh, twenty. I remember the dates. It's twenty third of August last year. Oh, so it's recent. Sorry, twenty twenty. Right. Last so it's year, recent. Jesus. Twenty third of August, twenty twenty, and then it that's so of, fascinating to me that you you get like you develop material without any reason. That's that's like I I could never do that. I, th- I would just be doing like a fucking judo flip for the next nine months if I didn't have a reason to perform. That's I think that kind of. I kind of go back to uh, not not really go back, but there's another fascinating subject. It's called uh, well, well, FOMO, right? Like fear of missing out. Oh, FOMO, yeah, 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 yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think it's part of that. You already accumulate your knowledge so much that you feel like nothing's can fool you, right? And then, but when you go back to, for example, Armando's metrics, fool the still still fool the hex out of me when right, I right. initially, you know. Saw it. Um, right. Saw it. So I think it's just the driving force, that curiosity, that thirst for knowledge mm. that I need to get, I need to know everything, which is unhealthy. Do you think it's a it's like a collector? Like the collector in you is going, I need to collect every single yep. thing. I'm, I'm not going to deny that. I think there is definitely a huge truth in there. Mm. I am deep down, I'm a collector and mm. I'm happy with it. I think that's quite important to acknowledge that you're happy at the location at, at the position of where you are yeah for sure and yeah i'm in an i will self. say though i know some collectors and they they can't do that fucking matrix that way like you know what i'm saying that like i wouldn't put you in a collector box any <laughs> any like if someone asked me oh yeah that's that's uh, that's morris mm. oh yeah, yeah that collector and there's no chance i wouldn't even let them say that you know what i'm saying <laughs> so oh yeah nice. yeah I'll, I'll pay you afterward yeah um, <laughs> yeah so it's nearly two years of working on coin metrics. Mm. Oh, obviously I um, kind of bought magic books. Oh yeah. In 2020, 2022, I found that I have seen in terms of the publishing material, the magic books, yeah. 
this year has been the most I've seen most book I uh, publish um compared to at last decade. This year has the most published magic book. How do you know? I bought <laughs> oh, every yes. every year I kind of bought a certain amount of books. Oh so so every year you bought so is this the most you've bought of all time? Yeah. Or or or, and or is it the most that's been published both globally? Globally, yeah. So so how, okay, first of all, where do you even keep track of books, man? Uh, like how do you know who's coming out with books? What's going to be who's going to be a good book? What's a bad book? Like I don't like I don't even know where to look for that. Instagram and uh Magic Cafe. Oh, yeah. Instagram Magic Cafe. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, there, there's some hardcore mofos on that. Yeah. There's some hardcore mofos that know some fucking the date of like the fucking oh, you know, when they the date that the tilt with the pinky but the f- mm. slightly down it w- was invented with this thing yeah. in 1953 yeah oh jesus christ dude <laughs> i like you need those guys because you know they're useful but yeah. i could never i could oh jesus christ yeah <laughs> i i guess um you know harry lorraine right yeah yeah that's who i got a book of there we go i argue with him and then i thre- <laughs> i threatened to burn all his book that i i have on my bookshelf Why? but that was around like 2012 why what happened no it's just that i don't like because he's really uh say it in the public platform but um he just really just don't like his attitude it's like right. we'll publish the books but doesn't mean everything's your your right and then he will argue against you saying that oh wow so like you what how old are you 20 years old so you must have more you learn more magic in compared <sighs> to my 60 years uh, lifetime experience and then i was like oh dude uh, like i'm going to burn all your i literally <laughs> say it i'm going to burn all the books that um you'll ever publish on my bookshelf i'm gonna i'm gonna wait until you publish them <laughs> and then Buy them, buy them, get them shipped, and fucking burn, burn. them, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, but then, yeah, I pick up a few interesting stuff from them, but not much. Anyway. But that, that <laughs> annoys me. Like, that's like sort of the parent sort of pitfall, yeah. you know, where they're like, I'm older than you, so you, are, I know what's best. It's like, mm. don't, don't give me that. Give me a logical explanation. Mm. Like, 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 if you really think I'm wrong, then prove me wrong. Mm. Don't just say, trust me, I know better. Yeah. Because I'm older. That doesn't that doesn't help anyone. Yeah, you know that's annoying as fuck. Yeah, yeah. There are good thing about his book. A lot of good thing actually, but then it's just you know the thing with that book there, the special effects. I think it's called. Ah, is it is it a lot of packet tricks? I I feel like I remember like opening it. I'm like, god damn it, there's heaps of yeah. packet tricks in here, and I don't I don't like packet tricks, so I'm right. like, Ugh. yeah, you know, yeah. Um, and special effect actually has a lot of republishing material from his older. Oh, stuff. really? Yeah. But he's kind of pick and choose the mm, best one mm, out mm. of it. But no, it's a it's a good book. It's it definitely not on my top Harry Loren books. Oh, okay. But then it is a good book. How do you obtain that book? I don't like, know. Oh. I don't even remember where the hell I got it. <laughs> I have like literally no idea. Yeah. You have Start of Magic. That one is the one of the top best ones. Stars of Magic? Yeah, you can. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I I did um uh slidini's uh paper overhead yeah from, from that book i learned it and yeah. uh, i did it at a a gig i did with dev down in at rotorua oh okay we did like an old old people home yeah and um the 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 lady uh, paid us in in ethereum ethereum yeah oh. this, and like it was it was by one of the residents right okay and I, she just had several thousand dollars in ethereum yeah I was like, all right, well, if you can pay us, we'll come and do it. Like, that's fine, <laughs> you know? Um, and um, we, we like, we drove, we took a road trip down. Yeah. And uh, we stayed up, like, till, like, 4 a.m. The, the night before the show. Mm. Just, like, hanging out, you know, mm. smoking and shit. And then, like, just coming up with magic. And we were just figuring out, like, it was sort of like a, like a the something magic, but, like, the night before, you know? It was, right. like, it was like a fucking... And we're just coming up with crazy ideas. We're that like, what if, wild. what if we do like, you know, pre-show work? What if we do this? Right? Yeah. Turns out we were overthinking it because it was just, you know, like an old, old, old people's home. But it was really fun. Mm. And uh, we took this, uh, yeah, I did paper overhead, the Slidini way with, mm. where he does the, so there's a lot of guys that do big hand movements yes. and stuff, you know, yeah. but he does the, the, the offbeat in, in front of their face yeah, and then, and then, Slidini, and then right? pretends yeah. to like, uh, so paper overhead is, is a routine where you're, you're throwing you have like you know balls of toilet paper or whatever, mm. 
and you're th- you're you're throwing them over their head so everyone else can see that you're throwing it but they because of the the way you're doing it performing it they can't actually see you throw the paper right so they think that you're placing it in, the, in your hand and vanishing it. So it's kind of like it's magic for one person, but yeah. the rest of the people, it's just a comedy <laughs> act. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, I was like pretty pretty nervous about the way Slidini does it because I'm like, it, it, you know what I mean? Like, Such if a bold it, maneuver. It's really bold. Yeah. It is. It is because he, he throws it and then he slows it down. So from this angle, mm. you do not like if, uh, what's the best camera? Like this camera here. From this angle, you don't see that I got nothing in my hand, right? Hmm. So I can just hang out here for fucking ages and just pretend to slowly put it in my hand and you will never know that I had <laughs> nothing in my hand if you didn't realize that I threw it over your head. Hmm. Um, so anyway, I played around with that slowness and I played around with all those, those details and uh, it worked really well. I, yeah. I did it with the big ball at the end, the same way. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck, it worked. Wow. Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, It was really cool. I remember that. That's interesting because... The first ever trick that I ever learned, I ever saw actually is from Slidini. Um, yeah, so it belongs to, no, uh, I think it was in one of the camping, um, one of the camp that I attend when I was, um, I don't know what age, around probably 15 years old. Mm. But that's when I start magic, right? So there's this guy, um, he come up to me and said, do you want to see magic, right? And then he said, the goal, so I have one coin in each hand, right? The goal is to make coin jump from one table from the top to the other. So it all of them end up in you seem quite sick and skeptical, right? <laughs> wait, wait. One coin's here. Okay. How many coin here? Another coin's here, right? Okay. Yeah. I do that. You there motherfucker dude. You motherfucker dude. Oh <laughs> you fuck. <laughs> you fuck. Sliding in. Oh. Yeah. But that's like the first trick I ever saw. Um and then I don't know like that that uh, that was so clean for me. I don't know how it looks on camera, but that fucking was so clean for me. Oh. No, but it was such a like it's it's one of those things where I just beg for that guy to teach me how it was done. I was like, please. And then I think he told yeah, I think he did one of those line from the prestige. He say, Yeah, don't ever tell anyone how it was done. <laughs> <laughs> it was a magical moment. Right, right, me. right. And yeah. then I search it. It was from Slidini. Uh, yeah. That guy was yeah. a bad motherfucker. Yeah. Slidini was a fucking gangster, mm. dude. Yeah. Yeah. I enjoy like he 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 has a challenging act, right? Like mm. if you saw his uh um YouTube video uh well not his YouTube video, but you saw his footage on YouTube and his act was always Oh, did you see? Oh, yeah, you yeah, don't, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and then he was like Oh, you don't pay attention, and then you don't see. Yeah, what's mm. what's the eyes for, right? And then boom, <laughs> just, just destroy you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, see, that's what I'm saying. Is people talk about like, oh, it's, it's sucker tricks and blah blah. There's a way to mm. do it, man. There's a way to do it, mm. and like, there's even a way to do it as the asshole. You just gotta be good because <laughs> if they catch you now, you look like an idiot. Yeah, you just have to be good though. You know, yeah, uh, yeah like. You know, but also that self-awareness, because if you're just a dick, then people you don't like you. Mm. If you're likable yeah. and you're a dick, now you got something going. Mm. That's, you know what I'm saying? If you're yes. the likable asshole, that's right. That's a fucking good, good character right there. Any magician you can thought of kind of. The oh, likable asshole. Maybe Williamson? Yeah. Mm. Oh, he's not an asshole. But <laughs> yeah, but he's like kind of out there, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, who else? Who else? The likable asshole. Tom Malaka, but but I mean he's not ass again. Oh, uh, he's 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 just like very yeah 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 yeah. Oh, uh, Bill Malone. Bill Malone, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look at that. He always roll his eyes, he, he, and he'll roast you. Like he'll yeah. say, "Oh, that shirt will come back in style." I'm sure of it. You know, yeah. <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Bill Malone, Bill classic Malone. example. Yeah, yeah. Well, I haven't seen that many um personality like that out there. Oh I mean, no no no. I think that's that's why only... I like to watch him because yeah, like. As much of his stuff is not stuff I would do. Like I would never, like for example, I'm not gonna do sponge balls. Mm. I learned that move from him with oh, the, yeah, with yeah, the yeah. replenishing sponge ball. Yeah, and I did it on one fucking Instagram post because mm. I ran out of tricks to do. Right. But I'm not gonna go around my fucking gigs and perform sponge balls. Like this yeah. just not gonna happen, man. It's not gonna work for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. You know. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff I wouldn't do, but it mm. works for his character because he's so. He's uncon- he's he's not conventionally attractive, mm. but he flirts mm. with every girl in the room. Yeah. And he, you know, he he talks shit about everyone, but, he, but he's the ugliest yeah. guy there, so it's hilarious, <laughs> you know? It's it's just great. It's a great. I love that guy. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, kind of got the best of both worlds. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I wouldn't even say Slidini is uh, likable. Mm. Um, but yeah. then I think his magic quality is just so good. But he's got that suaveness. He's got mm. that, you know, that pizzazz. He's got that fucking swag. Yes, you yes. know. Yeah. Like, like even though you're not, it's not like he, he's not like your friend. He's not, mm. he's not like Bill Malone, like, blah, 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 you know, like mm. kind of out there. Mm. You still think, oh, that guy, that guy, that motherfucker's cool. And also because of the consistency. Yeah. It's like that from the very beginning, yeah. he's always that type of um, personality, persona or characters. Mm-hmm. And, and then, yeah, and, and it just stay throughout. And I think maybe halfway or maybe I would say two third of the way audience is already, you know, like kind of let go, let go of all the guard, and it's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. believe, I believe in this guy. Right? What's your What's your favorite um, act out of that Stars of Magic? Start of Magic. Yeah. Uh, who? I. I haven't seen this one done that much. It is actually the second or the first one from John Scani, the three red ball. Oh yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. He yeah. has a red balls right. Um, laying on the table so he put one two three. Oh no actually he put two of the ball put it in the hand and then he removed the third one and then when he opened the hand that's just three, mm. three balls. and then he keep repeating it maybe five or six times mm. yeah, yeah 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 I can't believe I say that like it's it has such a good impressions on me compared to every other mm. cards act there's definitely like a classic out there like for example the traveler um, Vernon's like car in the pockets, uh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. ambitious car, um, triumph. Everything's classic. It's all in there. Mm-hmm. But then, like, the one that draws my attention is actually anything other than car. Mm, yeah, it has. I, I feel like as as card magicians, it's like you've seen everything. It's all re- It's all done before. There's not. You know, like it takes a certain type of card act to be like, whoa, you know, like when I saw, first saw Double Exposure, I'm like, what the fuck is ah, this? You know, like yes. like uh, there's something else to it. Like if, if it's the same old shit, like, yeah. you know, yeah. whereas when you see um, a unique act with objects that aren't cards, yes, yes. then it's it's it sticks in your mind more because mm. that, first of all, the props are unique. There's something unique about the prop itself, right? Yeah. Yeah, there was this Spanish magician called um, Luis uh, Plajita. Uh, Plajita. Uh, it's a guy with the glasses, and then he had a really, um, he, he had his own show. Right. And you can actually find his um, video footage on YouTube. But then when he, he's a coin, mag- he's a coin magician, but whenever he did coin, he come with all sort of weird props. For example, one of the fam- most famous one is actually the sponge. And so he has this cut up sponge mm. for the um, dishwashing. Right. Put it, lay it on the table. And then he actually jam a coin inside that sponge. Right. And the coin disappear. <laughs> right. But then he would take that sponge. And well, he actually vanished all four coin and right. then put in the sponge. And right. then sponge can be exam. But then he give the sponge maybe to a spectator and squeeze it. And the uh. coin start, you know, falling out <laughs> one by one. Yeah. That's like incorporate right right in just a random as, different yeah. level yeah. yeah and he also has one routine inspired by david roth who is a legendary coin magicians where it's a coin through table but it's a coin through a mini table uh, so that mini table it's like a wooden really miniatures mm-hmm. interesting table and then that's what makes that you know i had an idea for a uh for a card through like window oh yeah but to have like a screen, like a like a stand on a table, mm. and it's like kind of like a window frame like this. Yeah. And I had a whole like it's just the concept of the routine is that you're doing some sort of cards across, coins across, card through window, yeah. something mm. where it's like like a big barrier between my right and my left hand. Right. And it goes through here, and it's clear, so you can see. Yeah. Um, I haven't like that's just an idea. It's never I've never developed anything. There's a couple moves that I developed for it that would be kind of cool. I haven't really quite nailed that part, but yeah. Yeah. Um, I've I've had similar stuff. Yeah. Are we gonna see it in something Magic Five? Ooh, that <laughs> might be a tough challenge. That <laughs> well, would be a tough challenge. Yeah. Because that's like, that's not even like, like that's one of those ones where I feel like you know how with the dick switch i was like oh yeah like i just needed something and i did it mm. this is like i have an idea mm. but i have no real clue mm. what i can do 
like where I could start the routine, where I could end. Like there's not, like it's just one big empty page mm. and I'm just looking at it like, fuck, you know, like it's that sort of thing. There's one move that I have in mind that could work for some part of it, but yeah, it's, 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 it's not ready. I'm looking forward to see you on that. Really fuck. Now you want, now, this was like, this is years old, this idea. Oh yeah. Like, like I haven't fucked with it for ages. Like yeah. I've just, it's just been in my head for a long time. But then there has to be a reason why it's stuck in your head, right? Mm. Like, because if it's not a good idea that you have completely true, forget true, it. True, true, yeah. true. I feel like I wanna, I wanna get this, uh, this impossible location box done first. I feel like that's no, that's I, a that's a complete idea. Yeah, that's a com that's an idea for a method that would work for sure, mm. and it's it, it's better than the ones I've seen. Yeah, that are out there, and it could be original, could be not. I don't know. But yeah. point is. I would use it. I actually know I, nothing about this. Like, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you off here because okay. it's a little bit. It's a little bit. Yeah, I, I want to get it done first, and then we'll, then we'll see how it works. But yeah, you got so much to work on because like last time you were talking about memorize deck, right? <laughs> I promised Sam that stuff. I would fucking memorize a deck. <laughs> oh god damn it! I have to do it, bro. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> so much to do. <laughs> so much to do. So little time. I have to edit this podcast too. God damn it. Yeah. I, I feel like it would be fun if every single uh, you know, podcast that people was here and then give you one challenge and then <laughs> oh, any, any you just accumulate. <laughs> well, I'm like the whole idea of this right, is that I get to do, I do magic every podcast to mm. everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that I'm getting magicians on because yeah. I'm like, fuck, thank fuck this, this time. I don't have to do like anything crazy. Because I'm running out of material, you know, like yeah. every every po podcast, someone comes on, I have to like, have to do something that I haven't done before. Like, yeah. oh shit! So I mean, you haven't uh, apart from the soccer trick that you did. And, yeah, uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I let I let you do all the good stuff. You know, I'm not gonna compete with that matrix. What do you want me to do? <laughs> uh, all right. Oh wow! Hold up. Brand new deck of car. Do you know these decks? No. Okay. It's a, Maybe it's a David Blaine. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. <clears throat> so. Give the deck a shuffle, please. Okay. There you go. Take a card out. Any card? Yep. Shall I look, look at it? And uh, remember it. Yep. Shall I show? Well. Uh, you can show that camera behind you. Yep. Cool. And lift up anywhere in the pack, like a claw hand. Mm. Put the card back. Put the cards on top. Square them up. And pick it up. And now I want you to give it as many cuts as you want they mm. can be uh yeah they can be like a one cut incomplete they can be several cuts back to back okay yeah up to you yeah yeah you can i mean you can do like running cuts yep yeah now you're just helping me <laughs> no <laughs> hey, you can do you can do like an overhand shuffle if you want oh yeah yeah okay do you want to um Maybe like riffle shuffle. All right. Yeah, yeah. Now okay. you play me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Now, if I had said to you, right, mm. shuffle however you want, what do you think the chances are you went for like a Hindu shuffle? Uh, very little. Very little. I guess. Yeah. Is it some? Is it like? What do you think? Like, there's some magicians that use it a lot, but some people don't. Magicians from Asia always use Hindu shuffle. Really? But I'm not really good at Hindu shuffle. Yeah. Okay. Well, either way, the cards are shuffled. Yes. Right. Okay. Um, if you, can you name a number? Like just first number that comes to mind? 13. 13. Yeah. If you were to deal like uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, thir like 13, right? Yes. And that would be your card. That like that's pretty cool, right? It's yeah. it's actually the the holy grail in magic. It's called the uh, <laughs> what is it called? The um, any card, any number, that's right? The one, yeah, yeah. I mean, normally you get to pick the card and you get to pick the number, but um, I mean, I guess you did it in some way. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Can you take the deck? Yeah, and just deal down thirteen. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
Yeah. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Mm -hmm. What was the card that you picked? Two of Diamond. Take a look. Oh, fuck. Ta da! <laughs> Oh, you fucking wizard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hunt you. <laughs> Steady down, King James, you know. <laughs> I'll write you another book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Demolo Demonology part two. Exactly. Uh, fucking shit. lizard people and shit. <laughs> Damn. There you go. We'll talk about the methods of, of air. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> No, actually, I signed a contract um, with David Blaine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't, uh, I can't disclose any, um, yeah, a any methods about how to sit in ice, how to uh, stand even. on a, how to fly with balloons. Um, yeah, not uh, even privately. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we can put some ice in the tub if you want to practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That motherfucker is insane. Yeah, I fucking Amy bought that poster, that, that Frozen in Time poster. And I was like, oh. holy shit. Like, that is the f my favorite thing of all time. Wow, yeah. So, it's just like a reprint, but it's it's cool. I have not seen many, um, like, 21st century posts. Yeah, that's that's what I thought, right? Yeah. Like, Because I, I have a bunch of the old ones. I have a Thurston one and a, yeah. some other one. And I hate that one. The fucking, the one and on the left, I hate thunder. that one. I fucking hate it. It's got rabbits in it. It's got every single fucking cliche bullshit. Hoffman, yeah. Is it? You know, okay, so I... Um, have this brief story to tell. So, um, you know the quotes, magicians, the actor who playing the part of magicians, mm. right? Now, I have a thing or two to say about that because that quote's being misused a lot by Hoffman. Mm. Yeah. So, not gonna, uh, I'm not ranting or anything, but uh, briefly, the original quote supposed to be the prest, prest digitator yep. is not a it's not a juggler he is an actor playing part of the magician mm. now in the french term prestigitators means fast hand mm. pressed means fast digital means finger right so what he means by that oh and also the magician is a supernatural being right it's a person who performs supernatural act without the use of the hand Mm -hmm. or fast hand that sort of thing so it's actually not talking about magicians need to learn how to act okay it's talking about a sleight of hand artist a person with fast hand is an actor who playing part of someone who is performing supernatural ability right without using the hand yeah right so and in Hoffman's book Later Magic which he put it as a footnote from um, Robert Hood and that quote. Mm -hmm. right? He said, he, he pretty much just changed the whole thing. He said, mm. magicians is an actor who playing part of the magician. Right. And people start misquote mm. that sentence, that thing. But I, I mean, in a way it's still true, right? In both yes, cases. Yes. So yeah. I'm not saying that it's not true, mm. but it's just being misused. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and thanks to thanks to Hoffman, so we start kind of having this, you know. But that's what I guess that's what makes it interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's cool, man. Yeah, yeah. But there, yeah, there's a good reason that you hate. And I guess. <laughs> what well, do you? Okay, so to 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 what? How much time are we on right now? All right, to hot to start wrapping this up, right? Yeah. So um, there's a I have a book right there, uh, wherever the fuck it is, uh, about about. The unmasking of uh, oh. the mystery of Robert Houdini, uh, the, the the Houdini code is called Houdini, the Houdini, yeah. Houdini code mystery or some shit. Yeah. Basically, have you read it? Yes. Jesus Christ, you're a fucking machine. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, what do you think about it? It's so, all right. huh? It's all right. Is, do you find it to be kind of accurate or? Oh uh, well, it's not really about something quite accurate or. Uh, a mask of uh well that book is actually published it's a series of magazine that put it in a book mm. um and it's so it's a lot of kind of opinions mm. opinion piece in yeah. that book instead of um actual reference um we are we we talking about a mask of Ernest, right 
No, 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 no. So, okay, this book right here. Can you show me which one it is? Mm, hold up. Oh. Oh, so it's not a mask. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 not Erdnes. Yeah. Um, it basically, so I made a video about this. A lot of magician, not, little magicians got pissed off at me. I have not read this <laughs> okay, one, sorry. Okay, yeah. Um, a lot of magicians got picked, pissed off at me. Yeah. Um, but basically the book goes into ba how Houdini was a fucking dickhead, essentially. Mm. Like very, very self-centered, uh, would sabotage other people's shows. Mm. Like at some point, apparently he like set fire to some shit. Oh no, no, he, he filled like the, you know, the tubs that they would do escapes out of. Yep. He like put acid in one of them, f but You're for pink. like, for, yeah, yeah, yeah. For like yeah. someone else, not him, obviously not his act. Mm. Um, he was just very much like, I'm going to tear down your tower to get my tower to be higher. Yeah. Like that's kind of like the impression I got from it. Mm. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't, um, it wouldn't surprise me like if that is the case because to be that to be that prolific and that well known in a time before media mm. like imagine like you you can go on the street and ask someone do you know who Houdini is mm. and they'd probably be like oh, I've heard of that yeah and that's he's he, when did he live like fucking 18 something 18 1895 that's insane like that. dude yeah you know for like basically probably the one of the most famous magicians of all time mm. and so it wouldn't surprise me that he was just a fucking hustler to the max, you know, like doesn't care about anything else. Yeah. And then there's another book up there, uh, which is, I don't remember what it's called, but it's basically his, his, uh, his, his story of, well, his take on Robert Houdin after the death. Oh, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which yeah, was yes. kind the of. The one that I've read. Yeah. yeah, which is another one where it's like, yeah, Houdini, you're mm -hmm. being a kind of a dickhead here because like you took the name from this guy and now you're talking shit. And yep. there's a whole, it's basically just drama, drama in a book. Yeah. Um, so, so I wouldn't be surprised. Mm -hmm. But then a lot of magicians got so mad at me, mm -hmm. so mad at me yeah. for fucking, you know. And I'm like, man, I don't know. Like it makes sense, you know. And let me tell you this true story. Um, uh, and it is uh, probably a good way to wrap out the whole things. But so... Houdini and Vernon's and another friend of Vernon's, three of them were walking on the Times Square. Vernon meaning Di Vernon, Di the Vernon. professor. Yes. Um, they were, so this is coming from Vernon um, Companion. It's a really kind of expensive book. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But this is the story told from uh, one of Vernon's students. Now, Vernon's Houdini and Vernon's friend, three of them were walking on the street mm. right so there's this um this friend first time meeting houdini's and then they were quite um kind of just looking at first time in new york and then just really excited about things or two like surrounding stuff that was, they saw um this friend he said oh hey um so three of them walking on the street and this guy says oh harry look at this and then houdini got angry right mm. he said don't call me harry call me houdini in public space yeah first strike and then the guy the, the three of them keep walking and all of a sudden they saw probably saw something else this rainbow colors building or i think may might be a rainbow color theaters and this guy kind of just you know he's so excited he say oh harry and then harry imme um, houdini <laughs> immediately stop him and say i told you don't call me harry <laughs> And Vernon saw the whole thing. It's like it's yeah. like, oh, there's a tension amount, and then it's Vernon's friend. Yeah. Right. And then last time, so this obviously there was must be something else. The guy was got so excited, and then he accidentally say, "Oh, Harry, look at this." And in at that time, Harry Houdini got really angry. He actually slapped the guys on the face, Jesus, public, in the public, and said, "I already told you." Don't call me Harry, call me Houdini. And that's the time when Vernon's realized that they can no longer be friends together. Sheesh. Yeah. So I was right all along, bitches. You know it. <laughs> Stop fucking around. You know Harry Houdini was an asshole. All right. You heard it here first from Vernon. Morris, the historian. All right. <laughs> Vernon Companions from David Roth, by the way. There we go. You got the, you, you even have the citation. Okay. <laughs> That's how we do it on the Eduard Toto podcast. We don't fuck around with, with just bullshit. You know, we give you the, the fucking source, the citation. All right. <laughs> uh.
That was fun. Thanks, thanks, Morris. Thanks for coming on. Thank you so much. Do you have anything to plug? You got any uh, social media that you want to, any videos, any shows, anything you, you're, you're working on that you want people to look at? I have Instagram. Uh, I don't post as well often as I like, but then if you want to follow me is uh, m.c.magic. m.c.magic. I'll, I'll put that in the description. Shop for coming, dude. Thank you so much. Shot for the wine. <laughs> cool. That's been a podcast. We out. We're going to talk some methods right now. <laughs>